So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are here with a new gang member of the Pi team. We initiated him because we had to beat him in order to join the gang. So, he looks a little bruised up, but he's here, Aman. And today we're going to be doing Uttra Ashada Nakshatra and finding all the details on Uttra Ashada. So, and then um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I will have, I will also add Eve later on as she's not available. Uh, do you do some construction happening in her home? But anyway, so today, let's start with the new member, Aman Bedi Lambudara. So show us, uh, tell us about your, you know, uh, experience with the Trashara. Yes, thank you, first of all, uh, Kapilji and uh, the full panel, especially if, uh, the full Pai team. And I can say today the Vishwa Devas can vouch for this moment that uh, maybe I have done some good karmas for sure that I have given this beautiful opportunity. So thank you for, uh, for this opportunity and to the full panel. So uh, I made the slide on a very last moment. Um, and um, while I was making the slides, I thought I would be the last one. But uh, it's just that man proposes and, and God disposes. It's <laughs> happening right now. So uh, let me share the few slides I have made on the Uttara Shada on the basis of my observations okay. or on the basis of uh, my interpretation. Okay. Okay. So can you see my screen, sir? Yes. Okay. So the Uttara Shada, the universal star, uh, we all know that. So here I have taken some of the traits, uh, uh, the, um, also the direction, which I find it very interesting uh, when I was uh, going through my uh, personal notes. See, we all know the ruling planet for this nakshatra is sun in the Vimshutri Dasha. So the Ashada season, whenever the Ashada seasons come, the sun marks its journey towards the south node and which is exactly the direction of this nakshatra as well. So I find it a very good correlation in terms of that. So we all know the uh, um, deity. Okay, here I have made the edit. So the deity associated with this is Vishwadevas, the universal gods. And the symbol is elephant tusk. And also there is another symbol, the planks of the bed. Animal we all know, it's uh, male mongoose. So, which has in the yoni part, which has no female counterpart, which I'm pretty sure uh, Dr. Pai and the other panel team are going to do the very well uh, justice on the same uh, topic. So the Shakti behind that is the power to grant the unchangeable victory, which is why it is also known as the invincible. Or uh, we can also say they get the, uh, as it is the later part after the Purvashada, so they get the victory in the later part of their life. That also I have seen in many charts. So deity, as I was mentioning, the Vishwadevas, the universal God, their desired victory can never be lost. That, that is one of their desire as well with this nakshatra. So this was uh, very interesting while uh, I was accumulating all the points uh, from my personal notes. So great achievements but through the association and the alliances are done just like the uh, in other words what we can say is uh, the alliance of the all universal gods all the 10 vishwadevas who work for the welfare of this world so which i find it very interesting and that's what i have seen and that's what uh, i'm going to discuss in few of the examples in the later slides mm -hmm. And also I was going through, when I was going through uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Vishwadevas are addressed as it is addressed for group of divine gods, including the Vasus. And Bhishma, we all know, he is one of the Vasus. And the qualities of Bhishma, the natives might some possess, like including the self-control, the restraint, warrior nature, as we all know, Bhishma, Bhishmaji was one of the greatest warrior uh, we had and the rigidness in the nature and also the marriage part is always there uh, because of the counter 
uh, part we have discussed uh, in the animal symbology. So they are very workaholics. I have seen uh, in my observation, very persistent. And just like the symbol of the bed, if they lose their interest, they get very lazy. That also I have seen in Uttara Shada natives. So the Gana associated with this nakshatra is Manushya, with the Uttara Shada. So Gana Devta, which are also known as Vishwa Devta, are the caretakers and the well-doers of the human society. That totally matches with the Manushya Gana of this nakshatra. So that also I have seen, they are not biased. They are equal to the, all the classes. And they see everyone in equality. I have few examples later on in the uh, later slide. So the good example we can take, we all know Abraham Lincoln uh, was the one of the most famous president of United States of America. So the Gana Devta who led America through the American Civil War, again the war which is associated with the Purva Shada and the Uttara Shada. So, and he is also known for the abolishment of the slavery. So all the leadership qualities, because we have to see what is the ruling planet, because the ruling planet will also have the uh, qualities or the traits in the particular natives who are having the Uttara Shada energy in them. Okay. So again, uh, Kapilji, uh, what I have seen in consistently in charts, especially because one of the Vishwa Devas is also Satya, the truth. That's what I have uh, learned uh, from the Pai team. So if a uh, uh, second Lord sitting in the second uh, house with Uttara Shada, they are the people who will say that, tell me everything, but it has to be truth. That consistently I have seen if the second Lord is in the second house in Uttara Shada. Mercury sitting in, in this nakshatra, uh, great uh, consultant, great advisors, and I would say uh, they are the best advisors out, out there because we all know what Mercury is and especially the energy of sun coming into uh, this nakshatra, great uh, consultants. So good preachers, leaders, big rank officers, uh, they are very noble. Um, Sharp intellect, kind nature, honest. These are the some subtle points. Invincible, just like the uh, universal gods. Well liked, charming, and when when we talk about the charming part, the 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 very good example comes to my mind is George Clooney, and we also know the um, uh, uh, the issues which he had in the relationship and all. Brad Pitt, which is a very key and prime example of Uttara Shada. So they, uh, this is very interesting, Kapilji. Um, they have a, uh, the mongoose. So now we can study the how the quality of the animal comes in one natives. Like they have a very good stamina and consistency, just like the mongoose. And they are the greatest outfighter, which I, uh, when I was doing the research for the mongoose, like what are the qualities of mongoose? They are the very good outfighter. They know how to dodge the competition. And, and the patience, they have the patience as well. But they, they do not settle the fight. Like they fight until the fight is not settled. That is the quality of the Uttara Shada native. So they will fight until the last moment. You said um, well liked, charming, success later in life, usually after 35. Can you elaborate yes. on that? How? Um, while I was doing the research on some of the charts, most of the charts I have seen the success were coming after the 30 or 35 years of age. Few examples I can think of is uh, Oprah Winfrey, which is a very good example. Indira Gandhi, uh, which, which I have mentioned, I think, uh, here in this slide. So Indira Gandhi, the first and only the female prime minister of India, married once, who has two kids and later got separated. So the leadership qualities of the Vishwadevas or of the son, we can see 
in this uh, nakshatra george washington again uh, he needs no introduction uh, uh, the the father of the uh, george bush the mr father. lincoln also correct yes the lincoln yes mo a uh, lot of saints priest popes are also seen in this nakshatra as well and this is very uh, fascinating uh, kapil ji the last president of apparent south Afer uh, africa mm -hmm. uh, the federal clerk again the fighting cause for the equality you this is the very big example for this nakshatra we can take off so they are the fighter for the cause so sunil gavaskar again uh, he is a very famous ex indian cricketer and uh, the amount of centuries the amount of runs he had scored in the uh, uh, the indian cricket academy it is like a invincible but even though the virat kohli of the today's indian cricket captain he is at another level so so these were some of the examples i have seen and also what i have seen as compared to the purva shada uttra shada people have less dental problems where i have seen very uh, sharply purva shada natives have more uh, uh, dental problems yes and again there is a because uh, the purva shada is the, the 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 cut part of the trunk of the lord ganesha which is the second deity or one of the deities associated with this uh, nakshatra but uh, or the another trunk which is associated with the uttara shada is the complete one so what i have seen is the purva shada they have they are more prone uh, to the dental problem as compared to the uttara shada natives even though they might also have but this what i have seen closely have you also um, studied and observed this in the divisional chart nakshatra also or just the birth chart no big time in divisional charts the one of the biggest examples i can give on this is floyd mayweather okay because he is known for he is invincible yeah invincible yeah if you see his uh, uh, varga charts uh, here i have not taken his chart or example in all the varga charts he is very prominent uttara shada but not in the d1 chart wow okay okay in the d1 he is purva shada but in all the varga charts he is consistent uttara shada native so yes uh, and that's where we have to uh, i was planning to do another session with uh, dr pai to know the importance of uh, nakshatras in the vargas where we lack big time okay. so good point good point kapil ji and uh, and also what i have seen uh, uh, one of my friend uh, here in canada he has a big trunk uh, of uh, of an elephant even though it's i don't know if it's legal or not but i was curious to see he must be having some planet in uh, uttara shada so when i uh, did his chart ascendant and moon both in uttara shada he had wow so so yes uh, this uh, this what i made on a very last moment and also one of the remedies uh, i think uh, one can do in uttara shada in my opinion or in my interpretation is as jupiter gets debilitated in this nakshatra in the uh, uh, capricorn sign but in this nakshatra yeah even a small mistake again this i have learned from dr pai even a small mistake if they do it going to it going to be like a, a key pointer because it will have the expansion of masses onto them like because something it, small can go viral online absolutely yeah so they have to be very sure that if they follow any gurus or any mentors or the father figures be very respectful to them so this is one of the remedies i recommend especially if i see jupiter in uttara shada nakshatra and also if you see which is a little bit uh, off the topic if you see the opposite nakshatra degreeally to uttara shada again both the nakshatras are jupiter in bond one is pushya the deity associated with uh, pushya is brihaspati and another one is punarvasu in the cancer sign so right. brihaspati is looking at you directly in yeah. this nakshatra wow very great observation 
so there are many but uh, on the very last moment i uh, i was only able to draft a few slides on this okay great so um how about who wants to go next dr pai everybody's mute okay yeah no that's okay um, we're mute so um yeah thanks to aman i think he's covered all the basics of uh, uttarashada and uh, what i wanted to really look at i was just you know um, one of the aspects of uh, uttarashada whenever you look at this is one point where if you look at the natural zodiac this is a place where the sun gets direction strength you know from aries you go to the 10th house mm -hmm. because there are three parts which fall in the 10th house and in the tenth house, the sun gets direction strength. So the sun is very powerful here, naturally. Sun is powerful in the first house of Aries because it's exaltation point. And next point is this is where it gets really powerful. And that is one of the reasons that you see. And I'm quoting from Wikipedia here. I'm just bringing up Wikipedia. Um, and Wikipedia, this is about oath of office of the President of the United States of America. Okay. And I'm quoting from Wikipedia, swearing in ceremony. It says a newly elected or re-elected President of the United States begins his or her four-year term of office on the 20th day of January following the elections. And by tradition, takes the oath of office during an inauguration on that day. So what it says is, prior to 1937, the president's term of office began on 4th of March. But ever since 1937, every president is taking you know, the oath and swearing in ceremony happens on 20th of January. Now here is a capital Wikipedia it says, if January the 20th falls on a Sunday, the president will be sworn in privately that day and then in a ceremony the next day on Monday, which is very surprising, you know. Why would they want to swear in the president if it is a Sunday in private? And why am I looking at the swearing in ceremony? I know Aditya knows the, the answer for this. But this is very, very key because it's this is the day when sun is transiting the third pada or the fourth pada of Uttarashara. 20th, I think it's the third pada, mm -hmm. but 21st, definitely the fourth pada. Now, one of the do they do this because of this, or is this a coincidence? I don't know, I don't know. why did they choose the 20th of January? Yeah, and it's. Ever since 1937, it's always 20th of January. And now the key is why, if it is a Sunday, he is sworn in privately. Mm. And then on Monday, they, they, they bring him in public and the swearing happens in public. What is it about the sun? What is about Uttarashada? When sun is transiting a powerful nakshatra like Uttarashada, and that too, Every year it has to transit through Uttarashada for third or fourth pada. That is the day when it's transiting fourth pada. Now, why the first pada and the fourth pada are very important padas of Uttarashada? Because the key there is the first pada of Uttarashada is key because it is both a Vargottama in the Navamsha as well as the Pushkara Navamsha. Okay, so there are only three nakshatras which become both a Vargotamsha, which Vargotama means if a planet is falling in that pada, it falls in the same Rashi in the Navamsha as well. I'm talking about Vargotama with respect to Navamsha. See, Vargotama concept can also be used with any Amsha, any Varga. So you can have Vargotama with the D10. Yeah. You can have Vargotama with a D12. Okay. 
But whenever you're talking Vargotama, actually we're talking in terms of D9 in general. But it can be with what, you know, the same concept can be extended to any of the Varga charts, any of the division charts. So these, you know, there is, there are three nakshatras which are very key because those padas become both Vargotama as well as um, Pushkara Navamsha. So one is Rohini nakshatra, second pada. Okay. Then you have Punar Vasu, fourth pada. And Uttara Shada first pada. These are the only three nakshatra padas where they become very powerful and Rohi Nakshatra becomes even more powerful. What about the, the um, Uttra Felguni? The either the I believe it's the third pada. Yeah, it, yeah. Falls in Capricorn. Yeah, it's the first pada is Vargotama of uh, Puru Falguni, but there is no other pada which can be both. I'm talking about the pada which can be both Vargotama as well as Pushkar. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Both. Okay. So, which has, you know, it's double power. So, that is why I'm saying first pada and fourth pada are Pushkar and Avamsha. First pada is also Vargotamsha. Okay. So, very key, this thing. Okay. So, one of the other things which I think Aman has also uh, touched upon, which I've seen very prominently, is something to do with the teeth. Because, you know, Ganesha, Lord Ganesha, broke his, um, you know, uh, um, tusk, okay, to write the Mahabharat. So, one of the tusks is actually broken, right? So, I have seen Uttara Shara can make you a very prolific writer, very profound people in writing, or a scribe, they can be an excellent scribe. They can also be, you know, um, in note taking, you know, shorthand and everything. They are very good at it. But also because of the connection with the with the with the tusk, as uh, Aman must have mentioned, I've seen very, you know, life changing things can happen if something is happening with your teeth. So one of the things that I've seen is somebody who has a broken teeth and it is not fixed, and if it is associated with your eleventh house or the 11th Lord, or the 2nd house and 2nd Lord, definitely they will have money-related issues. You know, money doesn't stay with them, or there's a lot of expenses that can happen with them. So immediately fix your teeth-related problems. Your dental procedures has to be done. That is so strange because my wife has Uttrashada, and as soon as she fixed her teeth three weeks ago, out of nowhere, yeah. We had no plans out of nowhere. Suddenly we're not planning to move out of state and suddenly okay. things worked out where we're mm -hmm. now, you know, able to get a new home and then put this property on sale. Before that we were trying, it just wouldn't work out. And then I had given up on, I'm like, whatever it happens, happens. She fixed her teeth within three days or four days. Suddenly mm -hmm. everything just came about. Because new types of exactly. loans and uh, ability to approve came into play through some bills. And so now we can easily be approved and get a new house and then put this on sale. Wow. Yeah. Okay. There you are. So there is a live example in your own house yeah. when you talk about this. Within three, four days. I'm just like, because I knew I spoke to some thief too. I'm like, and he's like, yeah, if she gets this fixed, this and this can happen. I'm like, okay. So she wanted to get that fix and then literally it happened. Mm. Literally, just magic. Like just I'm like I had given up on the fact that I'll probably move in a year or two whenever we have enough funds and everything, but no, just you can now move. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are, couple. Yeah. You know, I've also seen some of them can have a gap between their teeth sometimes, naturally. Because when they're young they didn't put their clips on or whatever. Yeah. There is also loss of money. Usually, money doesn't stay with them in case there is. That is one of the omens, too. They say the gap in the teeth brings about hurdles in finances. I don't know yeah. if it was connected to Uttarashara or not. If it is connected to Uttarashara, you can be even more, more you know, certain. Okay. More certain about that whole thing. Okay. You know, so. And 
Oh, one more thing, Another. Dr. Pai and Aman, you guys both. Um, when you see Uttra Ashada in someone's chart prominent, do they have to run through the dasha of those planets or will they find victory regardless if that dasha is even 40 years down the line? For me, what I've seen is during the activation based on transits as well, I have seen. Okay. If the Antar, Pratyantar, or okay, Mahasana, those will come for sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what you have to know is I use the three bhagi and it works like a charm for me. I use only three bhagi. Yeah. Yeah. But when I use three bhagi, I also use the three bhagi with looking at the natal chart and never forget the Kalapurush chart, which means the cosmic man, which is starting from Aries. So from Aries, where is it falling? The Tasha. Falling, yeah, exactly. And in your chart where it is falling, and on top of that, I also put the three bhagi. And okay. it gives me very clear indications of what it is. Okay. Very clear. So use these as three layers. I use them as three layers. So it has given me brilliant results. Now, Uttarashada, also what I have seen is because Uttarashada kind of encapsulates a lot of his predecessor's qualities as well, which means all the, the, the you know, the previous nakshatras, all those qualities are kind of wish, wish way. That was, that was the name given. Vishwa Devas, which means universal gods, the 10 universal gods. And all these 10 universal gods, the qualities are coming from all the various nakshatras. So this is one nakshatra which encapsulates the energy of probably all the other nakshatras behind it, which means this is the 21st nakshatra. So almost 20 nakshatras it encapsulates. That's why it is a very powerful nakshatra. It gives you, um, you know, invincible victory, unchallengeable victory. Right? And let us not forget, uh, this is one part of the zodiac where between, uh, you know, Uttara Shada and Shravana Nakshatra, that's where Abhijit is, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Yeah. One of the key points that, you know, maybe I will cover on that. Um, that's one thing. I, is it Vega, um, Aditya? What you, you say Vega, Vega, but I don't center of the. This Lyra. This, yeah, yeah. They say it Vega. Lyra. Vega or Lyra? Vega is the star, Lyra is the constant. And the constellation. And what they say is um, it was Lord Sri Krishna during Mahabharat. There's a mythology behind it, or it's a folklore, or whatever you can say. The folklore goes that you know the Kauravas actually approached Sahadeva. Sahadeva was one of the best known astrologers of that time. And he knew everything about the outcome of the Mahabharata. So Duryodhan actually goes to Sahadeva and he says, when should I start this war so that we become victorious? And here comes the true nature of an astrologer and the duty of an astrologer. Okay. He said, begin the war in Abhijit Nakshatra, when, mm -hmm. you know, Moon is in Abhijit Nakshatra and when the Abhijit Muhurta is operating during that day you will definitely be successful. And fortunately, Lord Sri Krishna overhears this conversation between Sahadeva okay, and Duryodhana. And, you know, Sahadeva is on this side. Okay, he's with the Pandavas. He's one of the brothers. But then Krishna runs to him and says, what have you done? You know, why would you want to tell him, you know, what is the secret of winning a war? But Sahadeva says, he has approached me for consultation as an astrologer, not as, you know, somebody who so I don't see him as an enemy. I see him somebody who's come to me genuinely asking for a, uh, uh, you know, for a consultation, right. for a reading. And I've always have to give a truthful answer. And I think this is one classical example where, you know, you God could be the astrologer, but you always have to speak the truth whenever mm -hmm. somebody is approaching you. So that's why the story goes, the folklore goes that you know Krishna actually, you know, um, blew up the whole star Abhijit so that there was no constellation there and they could never start a war and then some of them say he also created a an eclipse during the Abhijit Muhurta so that you know they lose the Abhijit Muhurta that day so that they could never be victorious 
Okay. So this is the thing with uh, Abhijit coming there as well. It's an intercalary nakshatra. We never use them. We use it in Mohorta system. But definitely when the you know sun is there, it can be very powerful. That's why I give you the example of the swearing in ceremony. Why swearing in has to happen during that time? So that's the fourth pada of uh, Uttrashara and the first pada of... Yeah, it would be. Yeah, exactly. It would be almost the third and the fourth pada, I think. Just uh, crossing over between the third and the fourth pada. Okay. And the fourth pada Uttrashara is Abhijit. I see. Okay. All of fourth pada is Abhijit. And some portion, I think it's one fifteenth part oh, of Shravana Nakshatra. Yeah, one fifteenth. I will, I will talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, I have some slides on that. So, um, you know, also what I've seen is um, this Nakshatra, I've always said people that I, this is my one of my favorite Nakshatras for choosing anything to start something new. Because there's a very strong association with Lord Ganesh. And I always starts any of my courses in the past i used to start on uttara shara nakshatra because it's a very good thing because ganesha is considered to be the lord of beginnings and uttara shara relates to all kinds of new beginnings okay. you know, um, i apologize yeah. dr pai eve is trying to join so i'm just telling her where yeah. to like start yeah. so i'm just kind of yeah. like texting her she's gonna be joining okay, okay. so uh, another thing with uttara shara which i'll quickly wrap up because there is other panelists as well. One of the other key things, it's a Dhruva Nakshatra. Remember, it's a Sthira Nakshatra. Mm -hmm. You know, Rohi uh, Nakshatra is one of them and all the Purva Nakshatras are Sthira Nakshatras. Uttara. Uh, sorry, uh, Uttara, sorry. Yeah, Purva becomes uh, Ugra Nakshatras, appears. But all the Uttara Nakshatras and Rohi Nakshatra become Sthira Nakshatras. Sthira means, Dhruva means fixed. So anything that you begin on the Uttara and Rohini Nakshatra usually give you, uh, you know, prominence and give you success for a long period of time. So just like Pushya Nakshatra, Uttara Shara is another Nakshatra which can bring you permanence in anything that you want. Oh, hi. Yay, she, she joined. Welcome. You're mute. She's mute and I think she is, she knows we are recording it. Okay. Now she's on mute. Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? I don't know what you're seeing. <laughs> this can be black here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, please continue. So yeah. sorry to show up late. No worries. Um, and one more thing, what I've seen is this is an upward looking nakshatra. It's called a Urdhva Mukha nakshatra, right? Mm -hmm. And it gives you a long lasting fame because in activities that you do, especially during a Mahurta. Whenever you have to choose a Mahurta, any activity you start during the Mahurta of Uttara Shara, um, you know, against, except for, I think, marriages. Marriages, I don't think, is a good nakshatra to begin in Uttara Shara or Uttara. Because of the symbolism of war, I guess. Generally, the other thing. Exactly. So you don't want to start your marriage with a war, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nakshatra is good for marriage. They all, they all automatically go into Uttrashara. Yeah, no matter where right. you do it. No nakshatra is good no for marriage. For <laughs> 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 that's the magic. I know. This has spread the entire Uttrashara. Twenty-seven stars. <laughs> <laughs> Any nakshatra you get married in, ultimately your spouse, I mean your wife, will have the invincible victory. I mean she'll have the final love. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to okay. win a single war. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will know it. You know, whenever you win the war, yeah. you have to assume you lost the war. Right? That's, that's a real victory. Anyway, so let's go back to Uttara Shada. Now, Uttara Shada is also another secret I tell you about Uttara Shada. If Uttara Shada Nakshatra, the moon transiting Uttara Shada, ever falls on a full moon, because Uttara Shada is associated with full moon, Purnima. Uh -huh. If it falls, that is a very powerful day. 
and especially if you want to begin anything when it is a full moon and it's Uttara Shada, definitely it's a great day to begin. So 15 Tithi or full moon is, you know, um, it's usually associated with Uttara Shada. Okay. And uh, one more thing what I wanted to add uh, uh, to this is uh, anything that you do here can give you great uh, permanence and it can also give you a lot of willpower and firmness, you know, because of his predecessor, which is Purva Shada, where it's the first victory, this is the second victory. And what I have, what I have noticed is whenever the planning was being done, the planning by the kings were done whenever it is Mula Nakshatra, you know, very secretive, very hidden, uh, you know, like activities Mula. And the lethal strike would have happened in Purva Shada, okay, because they would take the, uh, the enemy by surprise. And by whenever the moon comes into Uttara Shada, they would have, you know, actually won the battle or they would have, you know, so it was more of a victory, but it was celebrations as well of the victory. Okay. And I yeah. guess because so Uttara of latter victory, that's where Aman was seeing more success coming after 35. The later part exactly. of life becoming victorious. True. Okay. And uh, if there is a connection, it doesn't mean only our 35. Sometimes if there is a connection with the seventh lord or the seventh house, then after marriage. Okay. Sometimes with tenth house, tenth lord, then when your first job you get that after that you can also get fifth house success. could be the birth of the first child. Suddenly you become exactly after yeah, after the birth of the first child, success yeah. will start. Okay. So you don't have to just look at 35 and above, but that's like a, you know, you can just say 35 and above, but I'm saying generally it is after the activation happens with Uttara Shara. Okay. Like you said, first, you know, Jupiter is there or the fifth Lord is there. After the first yeah. child's birth, you see. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I think these were some of the points. I might have more points, but I will definitely as we go along. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to say one more thing. The problem area, what is the the down, I mean, the shadow side of this, or the the pros and the cons. The 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 shadow side of this nakshatra is they have a feeling that I am the king, and I don't care what other people think about me. Okay, there is a huge ego. There is a lot of arrogance as well because one, for a fact, Uttara Shara people are very multi-talented and multi-skilled. So they know that they're better. So whenever they're in an organization, they think the rest of them are donkeys and he's the horse. Okay. okay. The best way to really massage the ego of a Uttara Shada is to go and tell him, yes, you are a horse and the rest of them are donkeys. I'm putting the donkeys with you. Let them behave like horses now with you. So what he will do is take, he takes a leadership and he will pretend in front of the client that I have got, you know, six more horses with me and right. I'm the seventh horse. Smart. But if you really tell him, if you really don't pay attention to him, he will go to the client and say, look, all of them are donkeys behind me and I am the only horse here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens in organizations, you actually give them six donkeys and one horse and you tell them we're giving you seven horses. Now you pay us for the seven horses. Okay. So Uttara Shara will actually know he's a horse. He'll be proud of it. He'll be multi-talented. But if you give him a pat on the back and say, I know you're a horse and the rest of the donkeys, but please take care of the other donkeys with you. And then okay. he will really mold the other donkeys to behave like horses in front of a cat. I, I think it's a very crude analogy I'm using, but that is how it is. Just know right. that he thinks he's a horse and he thinks that he knows it all. That's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyway. Uh, okay. So, I want to view people as well. Yeah. Okay. So Eve, I know you have a very busy schedule happening. So how about you share us your insights? Uh, may I listen for a little while longer? By the way, huh? May I listen to for a okay. little while longer, please? For sure. And I just wanted to thank you for getting getting me beautiful, <laughs> real Cuban cigars. <laughs> so, yay! Thank you. 
So okay, there is so one thing uh, I would like to interrupt. While uh, Dr. Pai was explaining this, I just heard the noise. My son was saying that I'm having tooth pains to mama. Wow. Look at the omen. Wow. So uh, I just wanted I, to mention that. If there is any, if there is any connection with your, uh, your, with in your chart or your son's chart with either the ninth house or the fifth house, then I think you better get him a dental treatment immediately. No, I think his uh, tooth is coming out. So because no, of no. that. No, I understand, but I'm saying if there is a connection in your son's chart, okay. your chart with then you have right. to leave. Okay, when you said this was another omen. Okay. The omen was he said, look, I've got what I've got, look here, what I've got is Cuban cigars. Okay. Instantly I got the idea of um Fidel Castro. <laughs> Very strong Uttarashara. Oh. Okay. I'll tell you some of the things, okay? okay. Uttarashara, multiple partners. Okay, if you really read about Fidel Castro, you can't oh, probably yeah. count. Okay, second thing, longest serving dictator, one of the longest serving dictators of the world. Okay, I lived a very long life. He always had a cigar in his hand. Cigar is Uttarashara, very strong. Really? With Swati, of course, if there is some connection with Swati and Uttarashara, because- So you want to know something? Yeah. I'm right now in the dasha of a planet who is in Uttarashara. There you go. And that's why you're- and only when that planet started, I started loving cigars for no exactly. reason. That's what I'm saying. Cigars is, but of course you need to have another connection as well with a Rahu Nakshatra or yeah. anything. But I'm just saying, Cigars is very, very, so just take the example of Fidel Castro, you will know Uttara Shara completely, the Cuban dictator, one of the longest serving. Yes. You'll never see a picture of him without a cigar in his hand. Okay, yeah. And multiple partners in his life. So this summarizes Uttara Shara for you. Okay. Who would like to go next? Santi, Togi? There is no choice. Each and later, Sandeep and Togi are remaining. Sandeep goes last. Who is the next? Logic. Logic. So, mathematical logic. I think, yeah, Togi is going going for sure. So now. What man? How are you all? We're great, Professor. Okay, good. Did yes. you do your homework? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, Uttarashara. That is my presentation, as usual. I'm a presentation style guy. It's a Sunday, the day of sun, discussing about Uttarashara, the nakshatra of sun. Oh, that's true. I didn't even realize that, yeah. And my, I'm living in a temporary home where internet is very unstable. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it comes, I don't know. But if it goes, just let me know, I can repeat it again. It's very unstable unless until I get my a new place which will be in few few days okay so let me know about it because okay. it's very unstable it's fine right now okay yeah sometimes it's fine and then suddenly it will for a 30 seconds okay. and all it will be having an issue okay great i think uh, dr pai and amman has already mentioned about some key concepts of utrashada and here some brainstorming session where i'll be having some quizzes and all for you and you have to answer those uh oh if you don't answer, that's all. You have to pay me $100 fine. So be ready. I'd rather pay the fine. <laughs> <laughs> so Uttarashara Nakshatra lies in from Sagittarius 26 degree, 40 minutes to Capricorn 10 degrees. Remember, it's a half, one fourth part goes in Sagittarius, the three fourth part comes in Capricorn. And Sun transits the Uttarashara Nakshatra every year from 11th of January to 24th of January. Now, I, have no, I don't know why I've written 24th of January and 24th year two times. 24th of January every year. So that's the time when the sun goes. And Dr. Pai did mention about president, USA presidential election zoning in ceremony, which happens on 20th January. So exactly when the sun is going in the Uttarashada Nakshatra. And moreover, more details, I will talk about it at the end when I will talk about some festivals and other things. I will talk in detail much more on this topic. 
so uttarashara this uh, constellation uh, the, the the yoga tara of uttarashara is called the nunki or the sigma sagittari and <clears throat> it exactly comes uh, at sagittarius 18 degree 32 minutes that's where the yoga tara of this uttarashara nakshatra lies so remember uttarashara nakshatra goes from sagittarius 26 degree to capricorn 10 degree but the yoga tara is basically uh, at sagittarius 18 degree which falls in the purvashara nakshatra all this uh, purvashara uttarashara shravana you will see that there are some yoga tara falls in a different zone and that's the concept of unequal division of nakshatras which is a topic of sometimes later but remember that thing okay so this is the more detailed view don't worry all the images are labeled for you so that should not be a problem so this is the sagittarius constellation what does this look like you see what it resembles the teapot uh, the stout of the teapot here it's the handle here is the uh, the the mouth of the teapot and this is the milky way that exactly was it's looking like the steam coming from the teapot is like the milky way mm -hmm. i was giving planetarium talks to my students on the other day and i was showing them because right now we have uh, saturn transiting uh, sagittarius and also jupiter is in scorpio and around mula stars and jeshta stars upon jeshta stars basically jeshta and mula part region of the sky so i was still talking them how to identify the sagittarius and it's nice teapot looking here okay but anyway uh, so nunki star uh, i had no picture where uh, now this is if you see the diagram you can clearly say what's the uttarashara people will be like this is actually a centaurus sagittarius is a centaurus half horse half human and then human is basically holding the arrow and and finally trying to lose it this is the base this is the head of the arrow this is one hand of the person and this is the other hand this saga nunki so it basically is shooting the arrow and then this behind back hand is basically where the sagittarius or the uh, uttarashara star nakshatra yoga tara lies okay so what can you what can you think what can be the so with this image what are the different uh, attributes you can connect with uttarashara nakshatra hunter war under war goal oriented i think all the plans are chalked out and pouring the wisdom maybe yeah absolutely like he knows the plan it's just like the last step the last step is to release the hand and then the arrow goes hit the target mm -hmm. so that's why so of course all so it's it's very the final part of the execution so final control and ready, ready to shoot all the goal is fixed the plans are chalked out and only the final step is to be executed so that is something you, you can take out from that from the just from the figure itself so these are the attributes of uttarashara nakshatra so this and the nakshatra itself was a final victory and all so you know all it so because plans are chalked out goal is fixed and all that comes in purvashara and its last step of execution i feel that whenever a rocket is sent out the last step when you really launch you know, the final button maybe that is the uttarashara nakshatra anyway i mentioned about it the stars is in the end portion of sagittarius constellation and expands till capricorn but the effect and but the star is in the uh, sagittarius constellation though uttarashara nakshatra goes from end of sagittarius to beginning of capricorn now this was something very interesting that i was looking the nunki star they say in arab it is called tani al sar sadira i don't know i'm not saying it correct and not uh, but but so the name which is like second returning of ostrich now ostrich example is coming a lot in this uttarashara when i now what are the uh, attributes of uh, ostrich if you understand it has got powerful long legs capable to kill human or even a potential predator like lion with forward kick so powerful long legs so i was thinking about an ostrich is a huge animal and uh, uh, that's um, i don't know whether it's in my next slide or so when i said about powerful long legs i thought about a sport and i was thinking uh, what is that so some some any uh, some some personality which is cristiano ronaldo and i was thinking about whether he has got something because powerful kick and all those ostrich powerful kick and i was thinking whether he has got any uttarashara nakshatra and immediately it came out that jupiter was in uttarashara nakshatra of course his sun and mercury was in shravana nakshatra so entire capricorn nakshatra has got really three planets 
what is capricorn nakshatra so it represents in the body which part knees knees leg part and you know how important legs and knees will be for cristiano ronaldo mm mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> so there's some connection with ostrich i don't know whether he is here uh, uh, because i was also something african countries ride on their back and i know that was it we were discussing some some time back about uh, uttrashara nakshatra in africa i don't know whether she is here but when she is here maybe i will ask her to talk about uh, uh, the connection of africa with uttrashara maybe sandeep can talk about it sandeep do you remember that we had that conversation few months back about uh, uttrashara nakshatra in africa how they are connected yeah i think he is here so she will probably ah, talk about it yeah. if you remember you said some connection of uttrashara with african country it was africa i guess can you hear me okay yes um y- yes um with the exploration um actually i hate to say it but uttrashara is very heavily involved in colonization hmm okay yes so that's actually more of what i was referring to um there's another thing you my- i think you know sorry to uh, interrupt i just wanted to add to what eve actually told us once she must have forgotten but i remember it very clearly she said and this i also confirmed in my own research that uttarashada is as i said the sun you know is very very gets very direction strength is very powerful there so she said actually uttarashada is very much connected to deserts or wherever there is arid environments right हॉट um dry climates um also archaeology is um heavily excavation archaeology colonialization um some of these kind of very organized um attitudes towards conquering um how you colonize a people how you collect their artifacts i mean i know this all sounds quite negative but a lot of this is very uttrashara driven um activity um museums <clears throat> specifically the capricorn side um you could say that would be linked with shravana as well but um but you will see these these kinds of things and and to further add on the political side our us elections used to be held under uh purva bhadrapada so purva bhadrapada used to be um when the um inaugurations would happen and i believe it was after lincoln that this stopped and ever since then it shifted to um it shifted to uttrashara and there's a very strong reason behind that in mohorta uh this nakshatra is said of course to be fixed invincible um but uh, the work that happens under it is of an extremely material nature not that uttrashara can't be um what we term as spiritual i i no absolutely there's a link with ganapati there's a link with extensive um extensive literature writing poetry those kinds of things languages uh higher knowledge higher learning institutes um there's even something with medicine where you're choosing this form of hortha where the medicine will be successfully delivered okay so so it is a it is a very powerful nakshatra it's not a bad or good just because i'm speaking about <laughs> colonization which i uh could say a lot on but um but when you do choose this nakshatra to do an activity under do recognize that it has the power of materialization and um and this is one of the reasons why you have to be very careful when you um put an activity in motion through this it can be um it can have a very powerful result it can even borderline on domination um it's a very singular nakshatra too it has a lot of no, i'm not talking about the people uh, please um please do understand that when i'm speaking about this i'm not analyzing anyone's personality 
uh, the, the old Vedic culture didn't really dwell that much on our personalities. Uh, they, do, they could care less. They didn't find us that interesting. <laughs> um, it wasn't very psychological. It was much more... Um, it was much more factual. It was much more about the timing to perform a certain action. Um, it was more utilitarian, to be honest. Um, any ritual that was performed was quite utilitarian. And uh, speaking of utilitarianism, this nakshatra is extremely, it's about tools, how to make something effective. But it also has this very singular focus. Now, someone with it in their horoscope, You've got to remember the horoscope is a painting, so every nakshatra is going to come into play. You may have some prominent planet in Uttarashara and not have a personality of a conqueror at all. Um, because there's, there's so many, there's division, there's vargas, there's, there's, um, there's the time period you're running where the, the graha that is in charge of your dasha, bhukti, those two grahas are going to dominate your nature. So never listen to one of these videos and just think, oh, um, you know, this doesn't fit me or, 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 or it does fit me and this must be who I am. Uh, you know, such things can never define a human being. Uh, change is our one constant companion. We'll, we'll never just stay stagnant. <laughs> You'll always be changing with the Dasha Bhukti periods, right? Um, so just Uttarashada itself as a nakshatra, the abode that it is, the power that it holds, is of a very singular uh, heroic nature. And um, it gives the ability of a person to <clears throat> singularly organize a space, conquer an area, um, achieve something in work, dominate another individual, um, which is more of the negative use of this, this power. Um, but think about the animal related. It's a mongoose. Does everyone know about a mongoose? So a mongoose will seek out a cobra just to kill it. The cobra didn't do anything. <laughs> I've seen numerous videos. The cobra won't be doing anything. It'd be minding its own business. It's not threatening anyone. It's just kind of cruising <laughs> through the, the land. And, and you'll see this mongoose, it just it, it wages war, you know, it did, and they're very quick. They're very effective. They go for the juggler. They go for the kill. So there, this, is, this is that effective side of this. I mean, the snake has no chance usually. It's a very, um, the mongoose is a very, very efficient killer, murderer. So um, when you do think about dictators, when you do think about organized, um, organized colonization of an area, of a land, the domination of politics, um, the, the will to be successful. You can also apply these things um, in a more, I guess, I don't like words like elevated <laughs> because I'm, I really don't want to encourage anyone to try to transcend their human condition. I think we need to hold on to our humanity so that we can help others. I don't think we need to become divine or this or that. I, I, I'm not, I, but I need to use the word elevation in the sense that you don't want to bind yourself to these kind of actions um, these kind of actions that get you more entangled in your own misery, give misery to others. Just, it's a very practical thing I'm speaking of. So <clears throat> the more um, detached uh, uh, honoring of this nakshatra um, would be, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm recovering from a cold, um, <clears throat> would be to, um, to focus on things that you would like to accomplish for yourself that have nothing to do with anyone else. Um, this is why this nakshatra is not necessarily good for marriage. It's not necessarily good for compromise. Those things in our life that we can't compromise, right? There's things, there's, there's value systems, there's things that we want to achieve, there's things that we want to implement that we don't really need to consult others for. We are own autonomous leader in those areas of our life. This is where the timing of Uttarashada can really help us because um, we can choose to commence an activity, let's say a sadhana, <clears throat> excuse me, a sadhana under this activity, commencing studies that are, that are for our own individual, um, our own individual world that, that we are in charge of. Choose this nakshatra. Um, it should commence your activity on this nakshatra. Those things which involve uh, compromise, diplomacy, 
Um, and it's funny that our government doesn't inaugurate. <laughs> I mean, that uh, inaugurates under this nakshatra because it's much more of a, a dominant energy than it is a compromising energy um, or diplomatic energy. Um, it's highly intelligent. So anyone highly intelligent has the knowledge of diplomacy. But this nakshatra is, is not where that uh, energy lives. This is where Jupiter debilitates, right? You guys know how I feel about debilitation. I, I think the whole terminology is messed up and all of that. So I don't want to further the belief that Jupiter is going to perform badly here. Um, but what I will say is that Jupiter's nature... Uh, his uh, diplomacy, <laughs> his um, ability to compromise, his ability to consider others, where it push you, cancer, the heart of cancer, you get emotional intelligence there, you get a d deeper patience, you get the almost the love of a mother there, which a real politician should perhaps adopt, uh, loving the people as their children. Um, when you get into Uttarashada, it's, it's definitely much more singular, so this is where you get the tricky side doesn't mean Jupiter's going to perform badly there at all. Uh, he can be even quite political, but he'll be a little more ambitious. And once again, I'm not talking about the personality of the individual. You have to consider everything in the chart. But Jupiter himself may operate just a little bit more out of ambition than he will out of concern for the welfare of others. So it's, 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 it's just that little subtle difference. But we all have a need for... Um, autonomous existence for individualism even if we're married that area that we don't have to explain ourselves to anyone that we don't have to compromise um, and in this instance invoking the the um, the energies available in this nakshatra calling them into your commencing an activity that you would like to be successful that is self-oriented you could not pick a better nakshatra now here's another thing Definitely look at Tarabala. When you're considering Mahorta, when you're considering commencing any kind of activity, whatever it is, um, some nakshatras that are, are auspicious for certain activities may be inauspicious for you as an individual. So you want to check that and you, you want to choose the next best, best fixed singular nakshatra for that activity. Most of the time, if Uttarashada is bad for you in Tarabala, all of the sun nakshatras are going to be negative. So this is, you want to you pick a different graha. You want to, I'm speaking of Dasha Lord, the Vimsho three Dasha Lord. So if Uttarashada is not your best graha in Tarabala, like if it falls in um, Naidna or Vara um, position, which is the um, seventh uh, position, <clears throat> you may not want to pick this nakshatra. Now in Tarabala as well, just quickly, and then I'll let someone else take over, be very careful with that too, because there are rules. It's not always from the moon. If the Lagna Lord is more powerful than the moon, you need to be counting your, ta your Tarabala from the Lagna Lord. If the lagna itself is more powerful than the um, than the um, Lord of uh, the Lord of the First or the Moon, then you also want to um, choose the lagna. So you would count the star from there. You can even count the tarbala from the sun if it's in the sun or the atma karaka. So that's the way you can determine whether those two are or not. <laughs> That's all, guys. Great. I just uh, like to mention what Eve G has said that whenever we think of Jupiter in debilitation, we think that the life is going to get doomed. So, the example which I was using earlier, the Floyd Mayweather, which is one of the best examples I can use for this nakshatra, uh, you will be surprised to know. I was just checking over the phone in the D9 and the D10 chart of his, Jupiter is in Uttarashad. Um, and G, um, let me mention this actually. Uttarashada for Jupiter is a very um, successful material placement. So the, the old version of exaltation for Jupiter, the reason why is Jupiter the highest benefit? Do you think it's the Vedic culture really thought that uh, being a material person was the highest value system? No. Right. 
they, they had, they had what we call spiritual values, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what you're saying, you're going to see, you're going to come across many charts where Jupiter is so-called debilitated in Uttarashada and the person's worldly power is immense mm -hmm. and their effectiveness in the world is immense. Um, and in what you said about the date D10, I, I would encourage all students to check the D10. It's a lot of times when you get Vargotham in the D10, like you're saying, that's an excellent observation. Um, then you'll, you'll see something very specific about that. D10 is a very important Varga. But yeah, this, this whole thing about Uttarashada and Jupiter or Virgo and Venus or Sun and Libra, um, it, you name it. Um, those po those positions can actually grant you the worldly side, the the material side of that graha very well. I mean, sometimes much better than its exaltation point. So beautiful. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to add that the, the Samsha reading that I've done on YouTube, and not even using the birth chart, it has come from my teacher Eve about how the samsha is the obligation to society and how we truly behave outside versus compared to even our birth chart, even the vamsha. So she's the person. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you did that, Kapil. I'll have to watch it. Um, yeah, no, D D10 is incredibly, it's funny we're speaking of D10 and Uttarashara, right? <laughs> we're speaking of a kind of similar, because Uttarashara naturally would fall, the Capricorn side, of course, that 10th house moving towards mm -hmm. the, Zenith, um, but Uttarashada is an extremely strategic nakshatra, and um, it has a lot to do with the world. It has a lot to do with um, things that we need to be successful in the world, tools that we need to be successful. It's extremely articulate as well. That's why it makes very good writers, things, you know, people who are very good storytellers in some instances. But the D10, uh, back on that point, just briefly, um, it's very important to look for the Lord of the first, Lord of the tenth, and then anything in a Kendra. And, um, uh, but it's interesting because once again, you'll see debilitation there, just like Amanji said, um, which was such a great point. Sometimes those planets do much better. I think uh, if you guys check uh, Steve Jobs, I believe his Venus is debilitated in the D10 in the fifth with Ketu, or is it, I, I, I might be wrong, I, but I haven't looked uh, for a minute, and I've seen so many charts recently. Um, but there's someone who, when they ran the cycle, that was one of their best worldly cycles. It was a debilitated planet. Um, so this is this is all. Uh, it, it all it all needs to be understood properly. But Uttarashada for Jupiter is quite powerful, actually. Um, actually, I'm thinking of someone right now who ha I know who has Jupiter and Uttarashada in the fourth house, um, and they're a great counselor. A great advisor. They're they're success very very successful in the world as an advisor. Yeah, so it didn't hurt that quality in Jupiter at all, <laughs> you know. And that is like the maximum debilitation of Jupiter. Yeah. Oh, it's exact. This person has it at the fifth uh, degree. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and they're very powerful as an advisor. They're a writer and a com yes. This person is. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, we just have to be careful with our analysis on that because the debilitation, Uttarashada also deals with doubt. It wants hard facts. It wants, oh, you know, uh, Swami Vivekanand, excellent example of Uttarashada. You know how he went to Ramakrishna and he goes, I, I don't experience this, so I can't believe it. This is, Jupiter is a graha of faith. So cancer is a more faith-based priestly sign. Uh, Capricorn is, couldn't be more opposite. Shani, any of Shani's signs, he wants the fact. He wants the real experience. He's not content with the, just the feeling. He wants to know it. He wants to own it. He wants to make it his. Um, and and Uttarashada could not be more of a... Um, more of that kind of force. So Swami Vivekanand, one of the most celebrated saints uh, that we know today, um, is a heavy Uttarashada individual. So he's an excellent example. He was quite autonomous, um, meaning that he had his own way of doing things, very powerful speaker, very influential, 
um, and, and very honest, I would say, about his doubt. Very honest. He wasn't shy about it. He wasn't trying to be spiritual in a fake way. You know, he, he wasn't putting on the clothes to be fake. He, he asked Ramakrishna, he said, what is this? You know, you're crying like a baby. <laughs> he says this to Ramakrishna at one point. He says, how, how, can you, how can you be spiritual? You're crying like a baby. You know, he, he had this relationship with Ramakrishna that we, you would almost think was irreverent. But it wasn't. It was the highest kind of love because it was so honest. And the bond didn't get challenged by Swami Vivekananda's, uh, by his abrasiveness, because Ramakrishna knew how genuine, genuine it was. Um, so this is, a, this is an excellent example of, of Uttarashada, and it's an excellent example why we as Jyotishis need to be very careful before passing judgment, before um, we, we uh, you know, uh, think something spiritual and something is not, something is egoistic and something is not. Um, you could say that Swami Vivekananda was so-called egoistic by challenging his guru that way, but was he? Is that really, is it, really, you know, it, it's, it is, of course, everything's a humkar, everything's ego, everything's identity. So um, the nakshatras definitely color us with, a, with, with our, their personality. Um, <clears throat> we're so insignificant <laughs> in a way. We're, we're, we really are just drops of an ocean, a bit larger ocean. And you can see it so perfectly expressed by how the code of these nakshatras, they stamp us with their with their personal brand. Um, even someone as great as Swami Vivekanand was under the stamp and the signature and the brand of Uttarashada. I right? believe even Yogananda was born around the Yogatara of Uttarashada, which is really yeah. yeah. Even uh, Mahesh Yogi, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, uh, Muhammad Ali, they were all born um, with the sun and uh, Uttarashada. Purva, Shara, Uttarashada are very common for saints, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Rajneesh Osho. Uh, Osho was, he Purva? was he Purva or Uttara? Uh, Rajneesh Purva. Osho. Yes. Osho was Purva. Purva. Yeah. yeah, both Purva and Uttara, they both have this discernment as well. You notice that, um, you notice that Osho's whole thing is he wanted to um, he, he, he couldn't stand the false piety and the oppression of um, saying that spirituality was only goodness, was only virtue. So he attacked it. And this is what Purva, Shara, and Uttara Shara are very good at, at attacking. So there's, there's a place for, um, you know, a real saint is, is going to lose all their modesty. They're going to lose all their care for what other people think. And they're just going to, it's, that, it's the truth that they're after, right? So I, I love the example of Swami Vivekananda because I think he's a person. Purva, Purva Uttarashara are all ninth house. Even the Yogatara of Uttarashara is in Sagittarius. So again, so ninth they both house. fall in the ninth house. Yeah, so the yeah. philosophers, religious, spirituality all should come in. <laughs> yeah, there is a, there's another angle I think nobody has actually looked at Uttarashara. This nakshatra was also called as Ishwara. Did anybody knew, knew about this? In the yes. olden time, it was called as Ishwara. And uh, let me tell you another thing about this very special nakshatra and the connection with Mangus. Mangus in Sanskrit is called as Nakula. <laughs> the Sanskrit name is Nakula. And Shiva's another name is Nakul. Mm. Okay, Shiva is called as Nakul. And Nakul um, is also a reference to the son of the Ashwini Kumaras. And he was Sahadev. very proud, Nak Nak Nakul and Sahadev. Yeah. And Nakul is supposed to be the most handsome in the whole of the Puru dynasty. And he was very proud about it. And he, <laughs> you know, that shows the connection again. Uh, see, Nakul means mangoes. And let me tell you, mongoose is also associated with Kubera. That says, you know, the golden mongoose. So that's why you see, this can bring you even spirituality. 
but it can also bring you the Kubera. That's what you see with, you know, a lot of the Archadas. They start with spirituality and later on some of them might also look at wealth to show their power. Interesting. Like Osho, did you know he had about 100 Rolls Royces? Can you believe uh-huh. Osho had Rolls Royces? Hmm. For a specialist, why do you need 100 Rolls Royces? <laughs> and he actually had agents who would give them instructions that this month I need to have this much of collection. So it was very clear in the documentaries, you look at it, he had very clear instructions to his agents. <laughs> so that's, uh, well, that's <laughs> but, but I have to say he's one of the most, I think, um, in modern times, I've never seen such an intellectual. Extremely photographic memory and he could re- really memorize about i think you know 5000 books he had it here extremely well read he was a professor and he was very good with his uh, you know with his subject oh his translations of some didn't he do the uh, shri uh, vigyan bhairav tantra um and the, the translation is immaculate absolutely it's immaculate yeah that's the um, that's the thing. Uttarashada does uh, the prolific writer aspect of it. And, and what you were saying about the memory as well. Um, I actually had a dear friend in India um, who was heavy Uttarashada. Um, and this person could recite any book in his library, whether it was Farsi, Marathi, Urdu, Hindi, any poem, he could just recite it. He used to just hand me books because he knew I was uh, also a nerd. <laughs> so he would also just, he would hand me books, but he, would, he could recite what was, I, it was amazing. I think there's a connection with this, AJ, of what you're talking about, the photographic memory, because Brahad Jataka says that this nakshatra is very strongly associated with elephants because of Ganesha. But also and Ganapati, yes. And Ganapati, he's about Buddhi and Siddhi. His spouses are Buddhi, uh, sorry, Riddhi and Siddhi. And, uh, you know, intellect himself, Buddhi. So that's why you see the connection and that's why you see the photographic memory coming from elephants. Because elephants don't forget. Did you know that any elephant who has been hurt, then I think even after 20 years, somebody comes, the same person comes in front of the same elephant. He remembers, he recognizes. They also get revenge, Dr. Paiji. I don't know if you know this, but um, they, they will actually, like if another animal is bothering their child, they will yeah. go make an example and kill the baby of that other animal in front of it. Oh. I mean, it's very, yes, they, they will go like squash it. You know, like, no, elephants have tempers. They have, uh, yeah, it's, so you can see the connection there too with Uttarashada. The, not that Uttarashada has a, temp, a temper, I would actually say it's quite poised. It ha- usually has a strong posture, right? Poor Rashada too, there's a strong posture to it, posturing to it, but um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's fascinating. You have to look at the whole chart of the elephant. Exactly, you have to look at the whole chart of the person. That's exactly it. Yeah. I know we have to be so careful with that. I know everyone would like this quick answer. Uh, oh, I have Mars and Leo. What does it do? Mars and Volta, Mars and Borb. You just can't do it. You just, it's like taking one part of your car and, and saying, you know, I'm this, <laughs> you know, like this one, like part of the engine, right? Um, doesn't work that way. But if she, you know, just to add to when you're talking about elephants, I've also seen the same trait with Bharanis. They never forget what they were. Yes. Heard. Yes. Ravati, Barani, both elephants. And so even after many years, they remember what happened and they will never forgive. It's very difficult for a Bharani and a Ravati. Ravatis are still forgiving because the last nakshatra is a Pisces kind of a, too, yeah. yeah, Pisces is moksha, but really Bharanis you can never... If you remember them. I had that elephant statue right there, or the painting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, whenever I had that painting on, I felt so lethargic and heavy. <laughs> and as soon as I removed the painting, my lethargicness just went away. I felt heavy. Like in the middle of the day, I would just feel like just sleeping all day. And then I'm like, you know what? It must not be the right energy for you, Kapil. Yeah. The, the Kapil the, when yes. I removed it, it was just like, oh, I, bre- I took a breather. 
Yes. Like some people do very well with having like images of serpents in their homes. Other people will not. No. Some people will do well with owls. Owls, there's a lot of superstition around. Some people will do very well with having owls in their homes. Other people will not. Well, I like to keep plate of laddus. Love you, Baba. Painting of laddus. Yeah. <laughs> <La deuce. laughs> That's the best answer to everything. Indonesia <laughs> <laughs> holds lettuce too, remember. That's all he eats. <laughs> hey man, I don't get lettuce that often. I'm very depressed here. I don't get uh, there's no Indian so proper Indian story here. Did anyone speak? Did I miss it? Did you speak on the Vishwadevas? Did anyone speak? Yeah. I will be talking. That is my next slide on Vishwadeva. So maybe I, I will call you for that. How about no, no, that? no. I was just curious. I actually wanted to learn. I wanted to listen because um, there's not an, I mean, you can say it's all of the Vedic deities. Sometimes they'll say it's all of the 33. Um, I've just seen so many different interpretations of it um, that I was just curious if anyone had spoken on it yet. Um, <laughs> it's about the Vasus as well, the Ashtabasu, how Bhishma Pitama. Right. Yeah. The Adityas and the, the, yeah, the Vasus. Yeah. So I wonder here some link with Punarvasu as well, because it's also um, a cross from Punarvasu. Oh. Aditi, the mother of, yeah. So anyway, I just, oh, there we go. <laughs> that is why the, that was my Yeah, that was yeah. my display. Because they say 33 cosmic powers, which consist of 8 Vasus, 11 Rudras, 12 Adityas, Prajapati, and Jayaspati, they call. So, plus, because this is from the book of Radha and 8 plus 11, 19 plus 12 is what? 31, and Prajapati, Jayaspati, and 33. And the book, uh, it, it's so, it's very interesting to see that uh, when they were kept, up, because it was explaining how they used to safeguard Soma and all from Asuras. So that tells us that how they were fighting with uh, these Asuras. So the concept of fight comes. And uh, uh, they are also good in keeping secrets because they were not allowed to say about how Soma was prepared to others. And they work together. So that means something like team environment work is good for the Uttarashada natives. For Jeshtha, it may be an issue because Indra and all, but for Uttarashada, team environment can be a good thing uh, to take up a work and finish the work. So these are the things which, which, which this scenario one can understand about the qualities of the world. What did you hear about this? What did you hear about Vishwadeva? Uh, did you... Uh, are you asking me, Toby? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I've, I, there, the similar things, I would have listed the same characters. Uh, sometimes you'll hear, um, once again, it's the 33, Vedic deities. Um, I've also heard references to it being a manifestation of Lord Vishnu himself. Um, you know, connected to the Virat Swarup. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right, uh, that was shown to Arjun. So I was just curious what, you know, people were going to come forward with with that. Because that's very interesting too, because it was so intimidating to Arjuna that um, he had to ask, of course, for him to, to stop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He begged him to stop. So it's it's that it's that place of power, right? Once again, it's like a this nakshatra has something to do, just like uh, Dr. Paiji was saying with Riddhi Siddhi. There's some there's all the siddhis, right? There's there's the the gyan and the power um, in this nakshatra, and th this is also uh, how Durga was created, right? Um, out of the shaktis of all of the gods. And Invincibility is a theme here. Yeah, that's something. Uh, it, it's so nice that you pointed out to that the Durga thing and all. Uh, but but I really feel that this Vishwarupa was basically Uttarashada theme, and there it was done on a battlefield again. Victory, war, war Uttarashada theme again playing there. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Praja, uh, Durga was also when she was formed. Now Durga Dasara is coming soon. She was given all the weapons by different gods, and she's an assembly of all the energies of different gods. Yeah, and you think about Durga. Um, one thing about her is she's autonomous. She's she's a uh, singular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she, you know, she they, they don't. I mean, some will say that she's nothing but Parvati. You know, you hear all these different things, but she's she's very. Um, 
singular. See, she has no counterpart like this. She's as she was created for a reason. Once again, that utilitarian side of Utrashara, that autonomous side. Um, I think you still see the environment of God in in making Durga. And the what? The team environment. The team, basically, the entire God. The team environment. Yes, to make one thing one. that for one purpose. Yeah, and the same. And so the cosmic form of Lord Vishnu as well. So I've heard that reference. Um, I've heard the reference of um, Bhishma uh, being linked to uh, Dhanishta and Uttarashada as well, oh, yeah. to both nakshatras, Bhishma Patama. So um, there's once again another very singular energy, and he was one of the Vasus. Yes, one of them. And he was the incarnation of the Puru Vasu, which was one, one of the Vishwadevas. Yes, one of the Vishwadevas, exactly. So there we go. There, there's some link there. Um, it's, it's interesting that Makar, or Capricorn, starts with Uttarashada and closes with Dhanishta. Um, there's a lot of the, that, uh, yeah, that's a very fascinating thing to contemplate because it's, it's uh, groups of deities that rule these nakshatras. You know? And then you've got Lord Vishnu in the middle of Makar uh, with Shravana. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how how Vishma Pitama is Vasus and Vasus are basically one of the, the Vishwadevas, a team of Vishwadeva or group of sub subgroup of Vishwadevas. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, so please continue. I, yeah. There, there's another thing I wanted to add here. Um, the number twenty one. This is the twenty first nakshatra. If you start from uh, Ashwini. 21 number is always associated with Ganesha. I know in the South India, 21 is associated with Ganesha. So 20, 21 mantras or 20, 21 um, you know, names for Ganesha. And here, you take a form of a grass, which is very favorite you know, for uh, Ganesha, which is, uh, you know, I think it's Darba, Darba grass. So he likes Darba grass. Darba, 21 strands of Darba grass are always offered to Lord Ganesha. So the number 21 is very sacred for Lord Ganesha. Remember this. So anything you want to start doing chanting, always do number 21. Right. Okay. <coughs> Kipka, what were you just laughing at? You look mischievous. Yeah, a couple of doing some mischief. There's some mischief happening. <laughs> so maybe a little bit. There's some see. definitely mischief might be happening. Yeah, what happened? Uh, some mischief is brewing. Oh no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is it? Yeah, Aditi, <laughs> yeah, why don't you continue right on that. and uh, finish what? your slides, Aditi? Why don't you continue and yes, finish your slides here? Yeah. Do not do mistake in front of professors. Come on. <laughs> full attention here. Full attention. I need your full attention. Who is this mischievous guy? Put him in the last bench. <laughs> okay, I think Amanji also mentioned about this uh, Uttarashara uh, theme, theme uh, about the Star Universe Star Foundation of a Strength. And again, we see all the themes of winning and fighting and all those, which I won't uh, just go. And then some uh, one of the of course uh, Purushat is Moksha, Ganai, Shakti again fighting Trimurti, Shiva, animal is mongoose with no pair. This only Nakshatra has got an animal with no pair. So we were talking about marriage, which I think we discussed this in the initial part when Aman was talking about marriage issues and all those mongoose and other things. Tree jackfruit. Now when I said jackfruit, have you ever seen a jackfruit with its outer peel removed? Yes, big time. Yeah. So, so how is the lot of how are the a lot of it? A lot of them. Again, like hundred of them. Yes, it looks like team basically again forming. So I also always felt that it's a group, group of the kernel yellow colored fruit, you know. Uh, symbols elephant star. So jack because jackfruit is a tree for uh, the Uttarakhand nakshatra. The planetary rulers, as I said, I always do this in every nakshatra: Rashi Lord, Nakshatra Lord, Navamsha Lord. The first pada comes in um, Sagittarius, so hence the Rashi Lord is Jupiter. The Nakshatra Lord is all Sun, in the, as per Vimshottari. The Navamsha Lord is again uh, basically uh, Sagittarius, so it becomes Jupiter. So if you do this first pada, second pada, third pada, and fourth pada, 
you will see that and and then take a collective decision it's all all planets of jupiter saturn and sun coming again and again and all are three major planets sun saturn jupiter sun can be what political administration rulership management jupiter is political knowledge guru ga saturn is discipline long term goal oriented patient so if you if you take the essence of jupiter sun saturn you may get some theme of uttarashara nakshatra basically what it is so always analyzing this rashi lord nakshatra lord navamsha lord you can talk a lot about uh, the nakshatra itself and i think dr pai mentioned this even i had this in a slide where these people i have seen there was one close friend of mine who was heavily uttarashara and always his dialogue will be live life like a king size he was one of my roommate back in my when i was doing my phd so he will always talk about this live life like a king size and dr pai was saying about that correct they will think about king and all those exactly this was his words uh, i just remember him when i was making the presentation of course i mean this presentation was made two days back dr pai was just mentioned it it was it's correct about the thing themselves as a king positives negatives both which dr pai did mention about uh, how donkeys and uh, he will be thinking that he is the leader exactly those thing can be there as it says i think this also point was mentioned of course the first father is pushkara navamsha and vargottama the fourth father is pushkara navamsha the second father is vargottama so more you will see that uttarashara all the padas are first second and fourth are some special padas and hence this nakshatra become very important to, to for any activity and uh, other things i'm just basically uh, going through in a very speed because i want to come to this festival part so we all know about ganesh chaturthi and it is celebrated the month of august and september but in maharashtra and goa ganesh chaturthi one one more one more time the ganesh chaturthi is celebrated and that is in the month of january it is called maga ganesh jayanti and it is of course now connect the theme of uttarashara elephants that with Gan- ganapati and ganapati came many times today in our discussion too and of course they don't celebrate it for like 10 days as normally people do but they celebrate for one or two days they they bring the ganapati idol and then do the puja and all it's in the maga month it's in the january month okay and you can see there is a theme of uh, ganesha with uttarashara nakshatra again with the festival i think many people may not know this because i don't know in other parts they do celebrate or not but in maharashtra it's two times one is in august which is the grand 10 day but other time it's also in uh, january time when they bring ganapati makar sankranti is another festival we all know sun enters makara rashi on 14 january that i did not say this was talk was given usa presidential inauguration date so again uh, i had this point which was we discussed Sir, on the sorry to interrupt on the makar sankranti uh-huh. uh, i would like to mention one thing before i forget uh-huh. uh, i remember sanjay rath ji i was watching his video a few years back Uh, i don't remember the full thing but what uh, i can see from my notes is as you have mentioned the sun whenever the sun transit the makar sankranti it says the jagannath connection here the jagannath mahaprabhu wears the makra chula on his forehead uh-huh. it's also connected with the abhijit uh, 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 thing as well because uh, later on uh, where the lord jagannath ji gave him the upadhi on his forehead Oh, okay. uh, another connection of makara chula he wears when sun enters uh, uh, of uh, makara sankranti uh, sun enters makara rashi yes yes okay this what sanjay ji uh, has mentioned with more subtle points in one of his presentation oh interesting interesting good point thank you thanks amon okay so again i think we had a huge discussion on this us the presidential new term So now it's quiz time. Students, be prepared for the quiz time now. Otherwise, hundred dollar fine. If G, you are not there, I said if you are not going to answer any properly, a hundred dollar fine will be imposed. She is already. I'll, I'll give you hundred dollars worth of ladoos. You can have all the ladoos. <laughs> all the ladoos. Okay, ladoos also make sense. All the ladoos. <laughs> so what is the answer of this? uh i can i'm having a hard time reading it on my in so what can you can you read the question aditya i understand uttarashara nakshatra can you figure which hindu festival is celebrated when moon is in the uttarashara nakshatra 
understand the theme of uttarashada and come come up with a famous hindu festival i'll say vijay vijayadashmi probably vijayadashmi any other answers think about it and i will come because my battery is dying yeah i think there is something to do with batteries as well i was just putting my batteries as well so. if you stop sharing your screen it will preserve your battery a little longer oh, no worries i just start okay. yes yeah sandeep you are correct uh, you get a pack of laddu maybe i won't give it the theme of five final victory sandeep in dasra nakshatra and the exact answer is vijay dashmi you can see the theme how dasra comes in every it celebrated when moon is in the uttarashada and the sun is in the hasta nakshatra So the theme of fight again, the festival yes, theme. Durga. Yeah, Durga. Yes, Durga. Yeah, Durga. I think yeah. in, so that's why I didn't say anything because I had a slide later where I was talking about Durga, and which we mentioned about how she was an symbol of all the energies of all gods. Yes. Other thing which is about Guru Purnima because Guru Purnima comes in the Ashara month every time, and Moon is in the Ashara nakshatra on a Guru Purnima. Actually, this this slide I just made when Doctor Pai was talking about Asha, Uttara Shada, and other things, and you can see. This is another festival when uh, moon is in Uttarashara nakshatra. You celebrate because why Guru? Guru is what again ninth house. So you see the theme of ninth house coming in the picture. Sagittarius ninth house, which we are talking on uh, Uttarashara natural ninth house. What is natural ninth house? Also for Guru. And I thought maybe if I'm talking about Uttarashara nakshatra, I have to talk about Abhijit because last part of Uttarashara nakshatra is Abhijit. So some two slides I made for Abhijit nakshatra. abhijit nakshatra is another very powerful nakshatra and then they say the last pada of uttarashara and 115th of shravana nakshatra they form abhijit nakshatra so capricorn 6 degree 40 minutes to capricorn 10 degree 53 minutes is abhijit nakshatra so that part is very powerful and it is called abhijit nakshatra and remember now people always confuse with abhijit nakshatra and abhijit murta abhijit murta is the lotus of moon and muhurt is nothing but a duration of 48 minutes in sanskrit is called as muhurt so abhijit muhurt is nothing but local noon plus minus 48 minutes or plus minus 24 minutes i don't know that this is 48 i need to i think this is 24 because uh, this is 24 minutes before local noon to 24 minutes after local noon that part of muhurt is uh, uh, called abhijit muhurt so maybe i should change here so that there's no confusion so i should make it 24 and what is local noon local noon differs from different times it's half way between sunrise and sunset so if it is an abhijit nakshatra and if you want to carry abhijit nakshatra means when the moon is in the abhijit nakshatra it will be very for very small time because it's only 4 5 degrees and you get a local noon abhijit murta and to commence any activity during that time will be very powerful because you have abhijit nakshatra as well as abhijit murta so on that abhijit murta is changing from place to place so do an astronomy understand where is local noon and see if moon is in abhijit nakshatra and then try to uh, do some activities if you have really very important activity that will be very powerful time so if you do laddus during that mahurta you become strong oh, really? yeah, yeah yeah generally i will be looking for that everyone if they give me one kilo laddus that means five kilo laddus i will get i'm very happy so please uh, there is another omen when you are talking about laddus which came to my mind Mm-hmm. This is again another point uh, about Uttara Shada. Uttara Shada is one nakshatra which can be effectively used for administering medicines for diabetes. Oh. Okay. I'll tell you why also. The the uh, the the plant which is associated with Uttara Shada is uh, jackfruit. Mm-hmm. And jackfruit is very effectively lowers your blood sugar levels. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can use this and see again association with Ganesha. Remember, even in some Ganesha mantras, when you see they say Jambu Pala Bakshitam, which means he likes eating jamun fruits. Jamun and the stem of lotus is very effective for you know bringing down the you know. Um, the, for the insulin level and also for bringing down the uh, blood sugar levels wow ganesha eats a lot of sweets but in his mantras usually there is a secret for the cure of eating a lot of sweets so this association is there even in here why you have you given jackfruit 
and you are connecting it with lord ganesh hmm interesting it's a lot a lot of laddus in modak a lot of sweets you have to send me laddus as well as jackfruit now now yeah if you have jackfruit it will lower your blood sugar levels <laughs> that's why people who are on medication with insulin they have to be very careful when they are eating a lot of jackfruit because it can alter your blood sugar levels jackfruit is the pa- papita is that what it is panas panas papaya this panas panas is oh okay. papita papaya papa okay so uh, sir arjun sir i would like to know uh, while you are saying this so do do you think the uttarashada natives either falling in the sagittarius sign or in the uh, capricorn sign one has to take care of what they are eating because if we exactly. make this as the ascendant the natural call put chart goes in the sixth house of okay. eating okay it's very very true and also remember um the second house from the you know the three padas fall in capricorn the second pada i mean uh, the second house is where the mudra trikona of saturn is second house is about food so there is some restriction you need to bring on the food and also right block looking at uttara shara mm-hmm. so always remember always whenever there is a mantra for lord ganesh you see somehow they are encoding something See, do you remember the 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 famous prayer? I think it's a Marathi thing. Jambu phala bhaktam, you know, gajana nam bhuta ganadi sevitam. I think it's Sanskrit. Sanskrit, yes. Yeah. Sanskrit, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So kapita phala bhaktam, jambu phala bhaktam, kapita jambu phala, kapita and jambu phala is connected to uh, you know like Kerala. You have you know bitter god. They all help you to reduce your sugar levels. because he has a lot of sweets anyway i think aditya can continue okay so finally uh, another quiz time name an indian national leader whom you think uttarash nakshatra theme will fit well not gandhi ji no think someone mentioned indira gandhi indira gandhi but i'm thinking morarji deshai though for some reason i don't morarji know why deshai okay i had a different <laughs> different thing uh some other during during freedom struggle time historical leader probably boss boss why i don't know probably war war victory he was involved in what war victory oh yeah okay great interesting Sandeep has all the answers. Founder of INA will definitely tell. He was our Mr. Bose. Mr. Bose was born on 23rd January 1897 at Katak, which was at that time Bengal Presidency. Now, Marisa. Sun was very end of Sun was very end of Abhijit Nakshatra. Like 23rd January again. Sun is in the very end of Abhijit Nakshatra. Mercury is in Uttarashada, and both. Now, I have taken this time as 12:15 from Astro Data Bank, Rodent Rating A. and with that timing both come in the 10th house also so that means both born almost at the abhijit murt of the day and i did check for katak when he was born at that place what was the uh, local noon at that time and it's exactly during this time so he was born on <laughs> abhijit murt as well as with all the sun in the abhijit nakshatra mercury and utrashara all in the 10th house and you see bose he was like you, see, you should see the film the bose the unf- unforgotten hero or something as in hindi movie and how did he go he used to sometimes disguise himself go run away from the house did go to afghanistan then he met hitler and then he like they were not uh, happy with his uh, like his plan then he did go to japan he took help from japan he marched the army then japan ditched him then by that time they already crossed the indian it's, it's a beautiful movie like how the he was planning and making all the plans so that taking the help of british enemies for india's independence so that's the power of uh, this abhijit nakshatra or utrashada and the final victory basically and i think it was there in some interview which i saw where people asked uh, i think it was mount batten or someone why did britishers have to leave india because at that time they were even victorious 1945 british actually they won the world war 2 why they have to leave india is it because of gandhi ji gandhi ji's non cooperation movement or other things were already failed by the time quit india movement and all 
and he mentioned it was after independence in 50s or something when he came to calcutta loud mount by his visit and he said it was because of this boss because he had already started this indian national army and britishers had learned a lesson in 1853 that if there is any big problem in the army that's all they cannot handle this country so before any mishap happen let's let's give them freedom and get out from here so you see how this plan was how boss made the plan how how did he learn from the history of 1853 and how did he made the, all these efforts to establish the national army and to basically make or to get freedom for india's independence so that's the power of uprashra highly political strategist leader and thinker and usa which also i want to term when uh, but another because i'm talking about now abhijit nakshatra usa new presidential term starts at 28 january and sun is in the uprashra is the just beginning of abhijit nakshatra because capricorn 6 degree 40 minutes it goes correct from abhijit if you see on that day 28 january or uh, in usa will be just beginning abhijit nakshatra so it's not only uttarashada it's basically the start of abhijit nakshatra so i remember when eve was saying that why don't they change that inauguration to uttarashada so i was thinking if they actually do do that in uttarashada November just being the election winning. Yeah, you know, a couple when you do a research, you'll actually see when um, they start with the election. I think it's in the first week of November. That's when yeah. Sun is transiting Swati Nakshatra. Let's not forget Swati Nakshatra is where the Sun actually debilitates. Okay. In degrees. Okay. And as Eve G mentioned. Prior to 1937, all the swearing-in ceremony used to happen on 4th of March when Sun was transiting in Purva Badra Pada first Pada. Mm-hmm. It's in yes, the oh, okay. Aries Pada, correct? Yeah, yeah. the first Pada, yeah. First Pada, mm-hmm. Purva Badra Pada. Okay, mm-hmm. that's when 4th of March. After 1937, they actually moved it to 20th of January, which is actually okay. what. Aditya is saying that is when it is moving into Abhijit Nakshatra. From the third pada, it is moving into the fourth pada. Okay. It's at the bottom. So And strangely, there is a caveat. I told you it's very strange. If it falls on a Sunday, I think Eve Ji didn't join when I was mentioning it. If it if twentieth of January falls on a Sunday, then he will be secretly sworn yes. sworn on a Sunday and the publicly on the Monday. The they are so specific about it, Doctor Paiji, that they will swear the person in even on a Sunday privately. Privately, so and specific publicly. about yeah. it. Yeah. But what 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 is so significant? Why they have to privately do it on a Sunday and then publicly on twenty first? There's something with the date. Yo, yes, date. absolutely. No, um, a lot of our politics are driven by accurate timing. Um, exactly. No, and I mean it's it's. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's no way to deny it. Um, deny it. Yeah. It cannot be a coincidence to move from Puro Bharatiya to you know this. So great. So I think with that I have a computer almost. Uh, yeah, a computer mic for. All right, Sandeep, what do you got for us? Um, well, guys, just uh, quickly, there. I I might get interrupted with um, okay. home renovators coming. Um, just letting you know. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my God! You got to do on the inside as well. They, they've already come and gone. Um, they've already come and gone, and but they'll be back any moment. So. Okay. What is that you're making, Eve? I see the background. There is some structure there. Oh my yes. Um, If you, it's not, I'm not making anything. It's, it, they're just working on the ceiling. Okay. Ingi, <clears throat> uh, I want, I wanted to ask if uh, you wanted to add something on Uttarashada. Uh, you know, before I began, I know you some time, something like that. Oh no, just uh, talk and maybe I'll um, think of something. I just, I wanted to make sure I could hear your presentation. Um, I didn't want to be interrupted. And, So sorry. So please start, and I'll <laughs> join. Okay. If you if you look at the please. stairs at your background, it's uh, it's more like uh, like a Urdu mukha going up, which is totally matches with the Uttarashada nakshatra as well. Yes, it's the st- climbing the, the yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good observation, uh, actually. Uh, Doctor Pai, uh, 
before right. i began could you like even could you talk uh, hari and harya aspect of uh, you know uh, abhijit and utrashada about the both of ayappan if you can hari hara concept is in dhanishta no but i thought it was uh, it's nara and narayan nara and nara narayan isn't there like narayan yes okay okay nara narayan yeah nara narayan is nothing but arjuna and krishna yes right yes. narayan is huh? nara is arjuna yes so that's the connection that you see in this it's hari hara think, uh, it's interest right i'm talking about hari hara that is for uh, right. the nishta the nishta okay shiva shiva energy Uh, the first two fathers right. and the next two fathers, it's uh, so right i thought um, so isn't the mohini mohini avatar is connected with uh, hari and hara right if i'm not mistaken no that is uh, you are talking i think you are talking about ardha narishwar mohini avatar is Ardhan, vishnu's avatar right. okay yes. you are talking about right. uh, mohini avatar right. okay i'll tell you about mohini avatar yes you are right the offspring of mohini avatar and shiva is hari hara suta hari hara suta right. who is nothing but ayappa right ayappa swami is an offspring of mohini which is nothing but vishnu okay and shiva right right it's interesting yeah it's very interesting because uh, uttarashada uh, nakshatra and makar sankranti is happening and in in right. shabrimala temple which is connected with ayappa you know it's a big thing you know you find that makar jyoti putting on that makar sankranti makar exactly jyoti. in that temple it's, it's, yeah so the light comes out on over yeah makar vilka as it's called and you know shabrimala temple is a you know a lot of debate around that temple recently in this as saturnus transcending through purvashada stuff like that uh, but right. it's very really interesting uh, you know i just want to highlight that it was very interesting that um, ayappa swami girl was born when uh, mohini and uh, shiva was un- united so that's very really interesting um, you know i just want to share that uh, because it's very interesting i think um, vishwadeva uh, is like a group of gods right we are kind of uh, uh, clear on that front but what is interesting is that um, if you begin to read all the um, sahasranama mantras right all the thousand names of gods like you find lalita sahasranama you find there is uh, sasnama um all that uh, sasnama mantra you find at the end of that sasnama mantra is some kind of united ardhanarishwar form which is being described so for instance in um, i think uh, probably in vishnu sasnama towards the well not in vishnu sasnama pro, pro, probably in lalita sasnama towards the end there, there is this description of like uh, you know shiva shakti shiva shakti ke roopan uh, so it's like shiva and shakti are united together you know that's one thing and then in vishnu sahasrama you will find the last sarva uh, prahana ayudha sarva prahana ayudha means like you know every he who you think as a weapon you know now we were talking it's very interesting because uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting points which came up before uh, you know in, in whatever we do. so like in vijayadashmi celebrations right we have 10 days of the goddesses right the nine nights navratri festival and the 10th day is the final day of victory and in the uh, around the seventh day it said that the goddess defeats the enemy defeats the asura that's the story and then on the eighth and ninth day the weapon is rested so on the eighth and ninth day what happens is that you take your books and you don't read the books at all because you are resting your weapons you know that's the, so you or many workers will be resting their tools or they'll be resting their weapons you know the concept is that the goddess is actually resting her weapons or also resting your tools on the eighth and ninth day on the tenth day you are actually getting it back so you know usually when you are a child and stuff the school is off you get to see tv you don't need to study it's very good day you know because the books are closed on that day but it's very interesting the concept of resting the weapon because uttarashada is also carrying this energy of weapon you know it's very interesting uh, what were discussions we had about colonialism uh, you know africa and stuff you know there's a lot of weapons happening in africa there's a lot wherever there's a war there are weapons there so it kind of makes sense in the goddesses uh, ten like the the days it is connected with the war nakshatra which would be the 8th and 9th day is actually um, the weapons are being rested you know so it's very interesting thing about that that's one thing i wanted to highlight you know this uh, concept of how the weapons are rested you know and definitely ganesha is uh, having a big um, in fact it's very really, um, fascinating you know um, one of the things with uh, 
utrashala i asked the natives uh, have you ever encountered elephants like have you gone to lands where there are elephants like have you been to thailand have you been to bali have you been to kerala where there are elephants things like that you know and for utrashala natives one of the things i actually recommend is to get some kind of elephant decor, decor in your home so get this in kerala you get this elephant decorations buy that hang it in the wall is great you know good for activating those planets you can actually make money but the thing is that you know people who actually have those decorations they tell the same thing you are saying like if you keep an elephant in your home you have to maintain and feed that elephant you know feed that elephant there's a lot of expenses involved you have to handle that energy which the elephant energy are still you are maintaining you know in fact uh, it's very important to be into the elephant kind of statues that you keep in your home even if it's ganesha and stuff like that you know say say you have three uh, three statues of elephants in which one elephant is dragging the other elephants or elephant is carrying a load or something you know it's just a decor guess what you will be carrying a load yourself you know that kind of thing will be happening uh, so that's one thing the elephant uh, so you should connect with land where there is elephant like thailand uh, you know bali uh, you know um, it's a great point uh, aditya brought this brilliant point about ostrich and how it's having long legs and stuff like that, you know. Um, so definitely, Aji mentioned uh, this, that how Africa is, could also be come to it, the Uttarashara. It's still having a lot of uh, open land and stuff like that. That's very interesting again. You find a lot of African elephants there, you know. So land where you find elephants can be come to the Uttarashara as well. That is one aspect I want to um, uh, as well. Now, it's very interesting. Recently, uh, you know, I think Amanji had uh, mentioned that any planet and Capricorn remedy is to chant the mantra called as Gajendra Moksha. You know, and I think the, the secret of that uh, mantra is actually coming from Uttarashara itself. In Capricorn, you have the Gajendra, you have the elephant energy of coming through the Uttarashara nakshatra. And Gajendra Moksha, the elephant is free, being freed from the clutches of a crocodile in that mantra in the uh, Srimad Bhagavadam. So, you know, if you chant Gajendra Moksha, you know, you are supposed to be freed from the clutches of the clutches of the crocodile, which is Makar, Makarashi. This is one interesting point there. And I think that's coming, actually coming from Uttarashada Nakshatra. And other thing, uh, I, one thing with uh, Uttarashada is definitely this connected with war. So, the greatest war which the Indian epics is uh, denoting is the war Mahabharata, right? So, one actual remedy which I have recommended for many of the clients is actually watch the Mahabharata TV series like on YouTube or Netflix or something like that. Guess what, you know? You, you needn't play out the actual war in your marriage or in a home or family. You can just watch the war on TV. You know, you needn't. I, and many things will be resolved because you'll find the kids are fighting the war which you have to go through that. That's an actual remedy uh, for uh, Uttarashada native as well. That is one thing I say. Yeah, the Vishnu uh, Sasanama and Lalita Sasanama, it's very interesting because uh, I think uh, Dr. Pai had once mentioned, I think PVR Natsuma Rao, uh, he had mentioned this um, you know, the first, um, you begin the Vishnu Sasnama, the first Pada is actually falling in, uh, it's beginning from Shravana, the Vishnu Sasnama's first Pada. And then towards the end, you are actually going towards the Uttarashada Nakshatra. It's very interesting because uh, now it is that because Sarva Prasanna, right? So the, he who uses everything as a weapon. Now Uttarashada natives will use everything as a weapon. You know, that's the, that's the talent they'll have. But at the same time, they'll also have the ability to use, see everything as divine as well. Uh, that is also going to be very powerful for them. You know, you have at the end of the day, you are chanting thousand names of God for what? To see every manifestation of God in different kind of ways, right? So that's exactly what happens. So in Uttarashad native, the highest, in fact, uh, if there is any nakshatra which I strongly associate with enlightenment, it is this Uttarashad native, you know, because for the, they'll be able to see everything as divine. And that's like the step one to really, really, you know, that's one thing I would say. Everything in your life is, you know, your own karma coming back to you. When you simply accept that many things just dissolve, you know, that's one thing. Uh, it's very interesting with uh, Uttarashadi, the animal, you know, I was actually looking at that. Um, so one thing with the mongoose is that there are many species of mongoose. You actually find, if you actually look at mongoose word, right, uh, it came from the Marathi word. Its root word is actually mongoose, which is actually a Marathi word, you know. And I think strong connection with Mara, the Mara and itself with Uttarashadi to be frank because of that. You know, and I do think that, and if you look goose, right, there are certain species of mongoose that do live in a combined community kind of setup, but there are also certain species which they live solitary lives. So among single throughout the life, you know, that kind of thing. And Uttarashad natives will definitely have that kind of solitary life kind of thing. They are free. They live like king size, as Aditya mentioned. They are completely like kings and stuff like that. You know, they, they don't care. They are kings of their own. That kind of thing is very strong. Uh, but it's very interesting because mongoose, as, as, as Yuji also mentioned, mongoose eats snakes, right? Mongoose pounces on snakes. So it's very 
interesting to think about because um, many many times these natives will be capable of handling snakes themselves these are natives who can just put pull a snake out of the ground and just handle it and put it out of your ground very easily sometimes i have seen that uh, you know many times this specific characteristic they will be attracting snake like people into their own lives can be snake like people literally like you know you you describe their partner they will be saying yeah, i had some encounters with snake like men snake like women exactly that that can be very strong for them you know because of this energy and this mongoose energy uh, happening there you know um one uh, again uh, ganesha broke his tusk to wrote, write down the book right so definitely many times i've seen a lot of great writers they these will write long mess- messages very super long smss you know stuff like that and you eventually end up you should be writing a book <laughs> you should be writing a blog that'll be great for you that's something that's very natural there also um and one thing with uh, utrashara we had to remember it's a nakshatra where uh, jupiter is getting obliterated you know so many times the natives who are more inclined to think religion as the means to uh, political victory you know these are the fake babas who find you find who are actually using religion uh, you know actually to um, political kind of to achieve political gains actually and it's very strong very strong with that it's not just an indian kind of thing but it can actually be like in for instance if you look at the shaolin uh, monastery right in china china if you look at its actual history you will find that they actually have a great history uh, in which the shaolin monks were extremely involved you go through japanese uh, um, history you find that you know there are monks who are actually involved in that you know so warrior monks were an actual group of army who would fight for samurai kings and you know stuff like that the shogun or that so many times i've seen that they have also fascination with shaolin uh, the monasteries uh, you know things like that and that kind of thing is also very strong and definitely they have a strong link with uh, ganesha for sure you know worship of ganesha is very very beneficial for them uh, things like that uh, and it's very fast uh, finally when you begin to uh, look at look at uttarashara through the um, eyes of uh the planets that are linked with that so for instance it is ruled by sun you can see that sun is having its mulatrikon uh, in kon padas of uttarashar in the fourth house so many times these natives identify strongly with their land uh, with, with their cars with their vehicles with their house you know they try to make the best of their house and stuff like that uh, that kind of thing that's one thing it's very interesting sun is having its mulatrikon eight houses away and if you pay attention to the omen you are discussing a lot of uh, eight house themes uh, you know earlier today like a couple you was mentioning about using the pendulum and he found exactly eight house theme kind of thing uh, exactly using that you know that's one thing and also like uh, you know uh, he was also in fourth house theme uh, we we showed the omen in which uh, you know the fourth he was able to move and stuff after his wife's uh, tooth operation happened right so again fourth house themes is happening there now sorry uh, interesting it's the actual capricorn pada that is happening you know so that is one thing uh, it's very fascinating again so if you was also talking about there was a lot of um, um, kind of question this guru in a very strong fashion because jupiter is having its mulatrikon in 12th house uh, in sagittarius so there's this fundamental questioning i want to understand the basics but it's happening in a very detached kind of manner you know it's very strong there this also great you know um, yeah and i think uh, there's this uh, uttarashada definitely um, finally is a nakshatra of final uh, victory right so it's like uh, but to attain a victory you have to fight a battle that's kind of that's kind of required so you know many times these are the natives who have to fight a battle who have to face the life who have to like go through the thing and then finally they one thing i always tell these natives that you you are a shori you know uh, that's something i say and i think uh, um, achala ji also once mentioned that um, you in a uh, in body kind of level uh, you know immunity is kind of linked with uh, this invincibility you know so many if you have many times if you have malefics there so many most of the times they have like autoimmune kind of disorders something with uh, you know uh, immunity kind of affecting disorders that kind of thing is, can also be strong uh, with that so, uh, but yeah with the uh, the one last thing i will say is that uh, it's very really fascinating again and i think i'll just leave i'll just end it with this point like uh, whatever we discuss right you can actually connect it with the nakshatras um, so like aditya was telling mine he was telling specifically 100 dollars right so you look at saturn being the ruler of uh, makara and satbisha is actually the mulatrikon uh, nakshatra of saturn going second house away from uh, you know makara literally so you're saying 100 dollars because satbisha is yeah one thing yeah and then and after that he said let do i'll be happy you know 
that's what again happened again the number 100 came out to satyabisham you know and i think uh, you know the um, very fascinating again uh, if you begin to look at uh, the planets that are influencing one particular uh, nakshatra at the rashi level at the nakshatra and look at the ag- actual nakshatras where the planet is getting exalted debilitated and moved around that is going to give you much more finer results you know like what you are actually observing so i think uh, that's very interesting to think about you know um, but yeah i think that's what i have for utrashala okay great eve do you uh, want to a couple ji <laughs> ha a couple ji uh, why well, do you also you guys pretty much have said everything the only thing that i will add is uh, utrashala people always like to be on time when they're let's say they're going on a date business meeting they want to be on time and if they are late those particular meetings those particular organized event do not go in their favor because this kind of corresponds to the timing where war was supposed to start during abhijit krishna took it away so that means if it's not started at that particular right time they would lose so they always feel like they have to be on time or even a little bit early before their uh duties commence with whatever they are doing the other thing i also see like with the war they love watching war sagas like lord of the rings star wars you know anything or mahabharata even there uh very much into it and uh, the other thing i also see is they have they love collecting gold investing in gold i don't know why because i even ran this thing with my students on my academy and most of them who emailed agreed like gold is ruled by sun you know yeah the so next- sun is in the eighth the moon trigon from capricorn yeah. which is the their assets, yeah. storage hidden storage yeah. exactly so yeah. they they love to like collect those things um and one of the things that you obviously said that they always will attract snake like people in their life but they find out who they are and they would crush them yeah like yeah. you said they bring them out of the hole and they okay here's the snake i'm getting rid of it but other than that yeah. everything else um you guys already said so and one thing yeah, i think uh, one interesting they always whenever the time period uttra shada comes in they always tend to injure their knee somehow somehow some way they'll injure their knee and i know saravan is co- uh, connected to the limb but uttra shada it always yeah. occurs for some reason and whenever they have a knee injury they get a break in their career meaning not a bad break like some break like somebody wanted to be an actor in some somebody's movies they'll get selected because of that maybe i don't know what the connection is but that has also been Kapil, Kapil ji, um in uh, um uh ashtotri dasha sorry um in ashtotri dasha uh, abiji drashada um parva shara shravana they're all ruled by shani uh-huh so that's an interesting point that the person these people could have ashto 3 applying to them and that a course can alter the oh. pre- the expression of an akshatra in someone's life it can be more malefic less malefic it can manifest a um i have heard that you can apply ashto 3 dasha as well to anybody like yogini dasha yeah it's a pretty powerful dasha i, I would say that it's a pretty I would not overlook it. I would not overlook it. I would highly encourage students to uh include it in their consideration for time periods like um there's some of the the more difficult ones like I spoke about on Purva Shada video which would like uh the Kala Chakra everyone tries to get that working and those are a little bit more difficult because you have to really understand what a upsavya and savya nakshatra like you have to actually understand what that how to use that to make it functional with ashto 3 you don't have to do that as much it's more straightforward it's a different pattern though because of course it starts with sun mm-hmm. um it, the planets are in different order and and malefic planets all get four nakshatras each benefics get three oh. so it's it's in there all together it's not dispersed like vimsho 3 so um you know here you have purva shara utra shara abhijit and shravana all in a row yeah governed by shani oh okay simultaneously yes okay that's interesting 
Yeah, so that it changes some of the, uh, it, you know, it's not a pattern in the same way as the Vimshotri Dasha, where you have sun, moon, right, Mars. And ruling, each of them are ruling Trikona. Yes, it's yeah. all in a row. And it starts from a Rudra, and I think I'd mentioned that in the Korva shot as well. So Rudra becomes the first, uh, first nakshatra here, and it's ruled by the sun. And you count four nakshatras forward like that. So, um, so it is an interesting consideration to think about uh, Uttara Shara being Shani's nakshatra in if, if Ashtotri really is strong for a person, if, if the rules apply, then um, the, the nakshatra is going to take on a little bit different of a personality than if it's if Vim, Vimshotri is stronger than Ashtotri for the but person. But can we apply Ashtotri without even the rules? Because even that I've heard. There are, there are definitely Jyotishis in North India specifically that I have heard do this. Okay. Yes, I, I've tried. I've noticed, and I'm once again. I've um, for me, it's I, I'm I'm a student. I really emphasize that I I wouldn't want to take on any authority with this. Um, what I've seen through experience is that you do want the rule to apply. Okay, I see. It'll just be stronger. It'll be more definite. Um, it will, um, just like when you, you know, show to show three, you want all of these. I mean, Kapil, we should maybe do a video on this, yeah. uh, actually, now that I'm thinking like about it, because there's some very simple. With like daytime birth or Krishna. Exactly. There's these little bitty rules. And any, anyone who really wants to know can just read Briyat or Shastra. Yeah. But the problem yeah. with it is that he does not delineate a clear order to the grahas in every dasha case. Just the simplistic Sanskrit, he does not give you the full uh, instructions. Okay. So that makes it, we can just go over the Sanskrit, what he does say. And from there, you're gonna get people who are convinced they know how to use these dashas, but I would really be discerning. Is there any classical book that actually goes into the details of these? Right. I mean, all of them will touch. You'll notice that most of them will touch these different areas. So kind of like touch at, poke at it. They won't go into detail, but they may make the odd comment here or there. Okay. Um, for, the majority, for the majority of the classics, they are referring to Vimsho 3, I've noticed. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're referring. But then you, you have different kinds of Vimsho 3, too. There's not only one, one kind of... One can start from Lagna, one can start from Moon, you. the Vimshotri. Because they also say if your Lagna is stronger than the Moon, then you start the Vimshotri from Lagna. Exactly, so, exactly. Or Lagna Lord. Yeah, yeah. Or, or Lagna Lord. Um, there's other exceptions. Um, there's sometimes where you take a Nakshatra Tara from the 8th house, where you take a Nakshatra Tara from the 11th house, from the 5th house. It's, uh, it's, it's not as um, prescriptive as uh, people are making it. And because of that, we have um, a kind of mediocre version of, of the flow of, of, of Mahakal, of Lord Shiva, let's say. We have a kind of less detailed version because we're not really caring to know every pore of his body. Like we need, if, if, if we're in love with him, we should know every little crook to his face, every little strand, you know, how his hair curls in a certain area or how, you know, just I, looking at it more romantically, get to know him intimately. And, um, and uh, I think the Dasha systems are Mahakal himself in expression. They're his dance. And, um, and then there's all these little bitty details. It's, it's not as intellectual as one may think either. You definitely need an intellect. You need a strong intellect that's cultivated in one way. But, and it's not entirely intuitive. It's more observational. You have to be willing to, to breathe, to take time with it, to just observe it. You don't have to be in a rush to collect infinite information. What will infinite information do for you? <laughs> 
make your head explode. You'll be, it's nothing. It's, it's not, it serves no one, you know? So, um, and then intuition is often too colored by a person's emotions to be trustworthy. You need to be very careful. I feel this, I feel that. And it gets thrown around too easily in spiritual communities and it's not refined by the hard questioning of the intellect. Speaking of Uttarashada, we don't have a Vivekanand going, hey, you know, did you really experience that? You know, can you give, can you give that experience to me? Um, so so we, need to, we need little tools to refine ourselves. And one of those tools is to actually love Jyotish as if you'd love a lover. Like one of those, that's the tool that's worked for me. It's not going to work for everyone, but to actually want to see the face of Mahakal like it really is, to actually love him and, and want to see every detail or poor or every, you know, um, this is just my technique because that's, that's the way. I, I feel everything's union. Everything's union. And for right. that, you definitely say that Kal Chakra Dasha is like somehow related to Shiva. Well, Kala Chakra, yeah. yeah I mean, Kal is that one of the... That really is the Dasha. It is difficult. It's difficult to predict even from... I often wonder if it's difficult or if just all the details weren't given. Ah, yeah, that's... Yeah, like Jaimini. Like, there's so many things in Jaimini missing. <laughs> and it's like, how much can you teach? Well, very limited. Unless you yeah. do observation in Jaimini. So. Yeah, exactly. So we, we are kind of working with, think about it. Okay, I, I was speaking about this recently to some dear friends. We have these resources, which are these classic books. It's so funny we're having this conversation in Uthra Shada, but yeah. it's fitting. Um, it, so I was speaking to some close people that, you know, I was just speaking freely. So forgive me if anyone gets offended by this. It's not meant to offend. It's meant to stimulate thought and, and question. It's meant to further your devotion to your... I only like offending, so go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying these classics... Yes, we should, we should rely on them. We should read them. We should be familiar with them. We should also understand that there's been a lot of invaders in India. We have the Yavana Jataka, that's clearly foreign. Um, Yavan, Yavan is, is a Greek or Persian or, you know, we have, um, we have all of this integrated information that's infiltrated the, cla the classics, like the word apoklima is Greek. That is a form of yoga as listed in Briat or Shastra and elsewhere, re relationship between the sun and the moon. It is Greek. And, so uh, now yeah. let me just say this one thing though, real quick, uh, Dr. Paiji, just real quick. Yeah. So a lot of this was collected around the time of Chanakya. Just Chanakya in Chandragupta. Okay. So, you know, they were fiercely guarding, fiercely guarding their strategy. I mean, specifically Chanakya. There is no way with this oral tradition that it was recorded in a book to give to the lay person. We really need to be discerning because even in Briat or Shastra, it says a person needs to be adhikari. They need to be deserving of the knowledge before it's taught. Do you really think Parshar himself wrote this down? Or do you really think it was just given out like this? We're given just enough. We're given just enough. These guys did not think everyone was worthy to learn it. Now, people can get upset with me for it, but this is the way they thought. I'm, I'm just, I've just read it. I'm just being a parrot. I'm not the originator of this kind of discernment. Even the Tajika system that people use is not... As Persian. Yeah. That's Persian. For sure, that's Persian. So India was such a place that they would take in other people's knowledge. And the Greeks came trying to collect the knowledge from India. And Chanakya was not cool with that. And so um, there's no way it was just shared in this way. Um, I, I just don't believe it was shared in this way that was just, oh, everyone, the whole universe should know it. It could potentially be a weapon. You could use it against your enemies. It's a, it's, it's, a, it, it's a very powerful life tool. And when you really know how it works, you have an advantage over others because you, you know Mahakal intimately. You know Lord Shiva's 
the movement of his hair. You know when there's going to be a disaster. You know when there's going to be. If you really know this, it is a weapon. You are equipped. And you can't be careless. For instance, there's a story, and in Dr. Pai D, I'm remembering, I'm not, I, I actually really want to hear what you say, have to say, so hold this thought. There's a story, just quickly, um, someone gifted me this lovely book recently, um, and I was reading it, and there's a story in it of a, of a guru who has a disciple who has attained a siddhi, and, um, and, and, is, and, and he's wanting to use it, and this woman wants a child. This woman wants a child, and this woman has taken the student in and served him and all of this. And she says, please bless me with a child. And the guru wasn't there to look over the student. And the student being really excited about exercising the city, using this power, using the city, blesses her with a child. And he takes some food back to his guru, and his guru asks him, you know, what did you do? Did you use, it? Did you use your attainment? which I've told you to be very discerning and not to even show to anyone. Um, did you, did you use it? And the, I'm making this story much shorter. And so in short, the disciple says, says, yes, she was a lovely woman. She was so beautiful. She was young. she really deserved a child. She was, she was so gracious. She was a, a wonderful host. And the guru looks at him and says, good. So you'll die and be the child because there's no suitable child for this woman besides you. So you'll die and be the child. <laughs> so he sealed his own <laughs> by, by his carelessness, his carelessness with playing with these things. You know, even if you don't believe in these cities, that story is still useful. Because whenever you've got a privy, whenever you've got this insight, whenever you've got this power, this responsibility comes along with it. Wow, this is all coming out on Uttarashada. It's so fascinating. Um, so responsibility comes along with it. And um, I really think one good thing to do is with these classics is to definitely learn them, definitely honor the sources, um, but to have blind faith, to have blind faith that it is actually the words of Parashara, that it's actually the words of any of them. <laughs> Um, we we should be more cautious. Okay. <laughs> That's very so Dr. Paiji, I'm sorry. No, I wanted to hear what no, you're... No, I just wanted to add something. Um, you know, a couple of points, what came to my mind as you were talking about some of the words. Even the word, what we say, drashtakon, comes from this word called drakena. Drakena is a Greek word. Yes. Okay, we call it drashtakon. That's one thing. The second thing what I wanted to just point out because we are talking about Uttarashada, what came to my mind is, can anybody here tell me for how long was the Mahabharata war fought for? How many days was the Mahabharata war? 21 days. 18. Huh? 18. How many? 18 days. Yeah, it, was, 18. it was 18 days. Now, it's very interesting. If I start my count from Kritika Nakshatra, Right. Purva Shadha Nakshatra will become the 18th Nakshatra. It was the 18th day. Right. Okay. And right. did you know how did the whole war end? Who, what was the last battle between? between yeah, Bhima, Bhima cut off uh, his Uttaradana's right? thighs. And Uttarashada, what is the body part it is associated with? Knees. Right, yeah, knee, right, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Kapil was saying something to do with the thighs and the knees. Exactly where? You know, Bhima strike Duryodhana, and mm -hmm. that was the end of the war, killing him by striking him on the thighs because he had covered yeah. that, not covered that part when he went. So that part was vulnerable. And Krishna, you know, intelligently he starts striking his thighs, saying, you know, right. instructing, Bhima, you know, um, strike him there on the on the thighs and knees. So the knees is one part will come very weak in. Um, in this nakshatra. Second thing, right. can anybody tell me what is the Jyotirlinga associated with Capricorn Rashi? Mahakaleshwar. Mahakaleshwar is a Swati. Mahakaleshwar is is connected to Libra because Saturn gets exalted there. Right, right. Okay. It is Bhima Shankar. Ooh, interesting. Can you, can you repeat that, Dr. Paiji? What is it? 
Okay. Did you know all the Jyotir Lingas associated with the exaltation of the planets? Yes. With the exaltation of the planets, you're saying? Exactly. Okay. So, Aries is associated with Rameshwaram because Ram is sun, sun is exalted in Aries. I see. Taurus is Taurus is associated with Somanath because moon gets exalted in Som is connected to moon, moon gets exalted in Taurus. Okay? Yeah. And Gemini is called Nageshwar. Nag is connected to Rahu and Rahu gets exalted in Gemini at 20 degrees. So likewise, Mahakal is associated with Libra because Saturn gets exalted and Saturn is called as Kal. So oh, of course, the Mahakam, Rityunjay, Shani Sotram, all those, yes, absolutely. So through this, you can actually see, and that's what I say, the most important differentiation you do not make when you start giving information like this. You do not know Sanskrit has different words for a teacher. Mm. And we mistake, everybody we say, oh, uh, Kapil, you are my guru. Yeah. But you cannot be a guru because I'll tell you, I'll give you the, you know, the literal meaning. I've got a forward which says, what is the meaning of Adhyapak? Have you heard of this word called Adhyapak? Yes, yeah. yeah, sometimes I've heard that. But some Adhyapak means a teacher who gives you information. It's called Adhyapak, which means there is no knowledge. He's just giving you information. He's Adhyapak. Upadhyay. Have you heard of this word called Upadhyay? Now, who is Upadhyay? Sanskrit Upadhyay means one who imparts knowledge combined with information is Upadhyay. Right? Dr. Paiji, you, you, broke out, um, you broke out with that last one. One, one who imparts Upadhyay. knowledge of what? Yeah. One who imparts knowledge with information is called Upadhyay. Mm. Thank okay? you. Dronacharya. He's an Acharya. He's not an Upadhyay. He's not an Adhyapak. He's an Acharya. What is Acharya? Acharya is somebody who gives you a particular skill, who imparts you a skill. Archery or, you know, swordsmanship or any form of thing. He's an Acharya. Then we have somebody called as a Pandit. Pandit is one who gives you an insight into a subject, is a Pandit. Then there is somebody who is called as a Drishta. Drishta is somebody who has got the master of futuristic view. And Chanakya was also a Drishta. He was an Acharya, but he was also a Drishta. And finally, you get Guru. Guru is a supreme form because he is a master who is only able to impart you wisdom which is inside you. Mm -hmm. Never use the word Guru for anybody. Many of us may be just you know, like a adhyapak, we are just sharing an information. Yeah. Yes. That's so. Yeah, that's a very uncomfortable word. <laughs> yeah. So I want to be very clear because everybody, Guruji, Guruji, you know, Sir Guruji, I am, I'm a great fan of you. Yeah. No, I'm not a guru. I might be called as an adhyapak because I'm just sharing information. I'm not even upadhyay. Maybe we're trying to become upadhyay, but there are so many other layers. You're, you have to be a pandit. You have to be. Adrishta, then you can be a guru. So, like well, we're living in an incredibly uh, superficial time in that way, where where words are thrown around, and where the way you know things look are more important than the way things really are. You know, we're. I mean, personally, I personally want to thank you, Doctor Pai, on this because uh, on my channel lot of people get offended with me because whenever they uh, hear that I'm not calling my teachers a guru and they get offended and they, they write me on, on my post, why you are not calling your teachers as your guru? So it, yeah. it is good that you have mentioned that uh, they can go through this video now. Yeah, because in, in real life, guru, especially if you're coming from a community of Sikh, it is only Guru Granth Sahib. Yes, Satguru. So, they don't have a guru who can be in physical form. They say Guru Granth Sahib is the guru. Yes. So that's why you don't find any gurus there. Otherwise, you have Swamis, Gurus, Acharyas, and Pandits everywhere in India. Self-proclaimed. Nobody has given them the title. 
anyway. Great. Thank you so much, <laughs> Cassie. <Shout out>. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So I, 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 I tell, you know, nobody is going to call you a guru or an acharya. Acharya Kapil Raj. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm Dronacharya. Kapalacharya. Dronacharya. I'm Dronacharya. Thank you so much, guys, for this valuable information. I wish I could stay long. <laughs> you know? Okay, thank you. Calls. Thank you so sure. much.